Go ahead. And let's make sure to get some stills, please. Can we also get a tight zoom on the uh, polyps before we collect? We. Oui. It's full zoom. All righty. Try a bump okay. right here. There we go. Uh, okay. We're getting Come reports wide, that please. video is frozen for our scientists ashore, Stephen. Roger that. Um, is that for all of our scientists? Uh, both Asako and Chris have reported the same. Roger. Um, I will see if okay, I can... it's back. Refreshed. Okay. Okay. Okay, come wide, please. Uh, how to get this? Can we get some lasers so I can get a quick measurement? Yes, ma'am. Oh, the lasers were on. Yeah, they're on. Are they? They were when you were taking stills. They were in the shot, so I turned them off for a second. Oh, I see. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, come in there, please. And good. Try that out. Okay, come full wide, please. Do we want to try another um, polyp zoom? Well, I think we're okay. Okay. Uh, folks are wondering if you can change sort of the force when you're grabbing something, and I believe that is true. Um, and it's very important to change it as needed because the claws are very strong. Um, when was the last eDNA sample taken? And are there any notes that it was any of them were taken near Swiftia? I think they can also change the power of the slurp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is it still something in it? I don't know. Might be that same thing that was in it, oh. like, 12 hours right. ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Four hours ago, you said? Okay. There's a request from Chris to collect one here. Which I think is fine, because everything else after this is gravy. This gravy. is our waypoint. Okay. Okay, I'm all set. Come out, Foxtrot, please. Good there. Okay, close the box. Trevor, we'd like to take an eDNA here. It's Roger. That's going to be Niskin 6, please, Niskin 6. Our scientists ashore are very happy with this, both of these collections. Anybody got a pen? Actually, I have one. Never mind. You can keep bubble candle on craft armor. Okay, sorry about that. Does somebody have the uh, 
common animals guide that I usually have oh, here. Oh, yeah, that's me. Here you go. Thanks. So we're not going to get a background eDNA then? We're just getting... We got one. Yeah. We got one. Raj. A lot of the samples by rocks don't have a lot of animals, so they can be considered background. Roger. You're doing six. Oh, good. All right. We're having a whole smattering of easy samples. <laughs> uh, That's one way to wake you can up. Can you zoom in, please, Steve? A little more. Right there, yeah. All right. All right. Can't even That's see six. Yeah, oh, it's, it's yeah. tough. Is it, it's is, it, is it the green one? It's the white one. Oh. Oops. Hello, Magnum. Oh, oh no. Oh, I didn't see that one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Nicely done. Thank you. Come forward. Nice work, Trevor. All right. Whew. Turn these off. All right, now that everybody's awake, good yeah, morning. <laughs> good morning. Good work. Okay, you can secure porch light, please. Okay. Okay, did we want to explore this little summit anymore or make that quick jaunt uh, downward to the east? Um, before we make that decision, uh, can we maybe hop up a few meters and pan right and left? Yeah, you bet. Ah. All right. What are we doing? You're going to come up, turn on the thruster, and then we're good to go. Okay. Give me a DVL reset too, please. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay, hop up a bit and look left and look right. I think we can just go ahead and do that east move. Okay. And then drop down on the contour. Okay. And we'll try to follow that. Sounds good. Bridge nav. Can we move five zero meters bearing zero eight zero, please? Thank you. Someone tuning in is just wondering what DBL reset means. Okay, so <laughs> um, <laughs> on the bottom of Hercules, we have a DBL, Doppler Velocity Log, log um, which is an acoustic instrument um, that sort of determines the position of Hercules. Um, it, it determines the depth off the bottom. Um, and we also have a USBL um, on the ship and on Hercules. Um, it's another acoustic instrument. Um, it usually gives, it gives a little bit more of an accurate position of Hercules because we can use the GPS on the ship. Um, GPS doesn't work underwater, unfortunately. Um, so um, 
Once we get to depth, we switch over to using the DVL for navigation for Hercules. Um, and it determines the position of Hercules based on the velocity and direction that it's moving, um, but it tends to drift over time. Mm. Um, so when we do a DVL reset, we're sending a signal from the USBL, the more accurate position, um, to sort of reset Hercules um, and say, you're not actually where you think you are. Um, this is where you are. Oh, that's interesting. That was a great explanation. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I think I missed a bit of it. I was double checking all of my reporting back here. All right, Steve, you know what I'm about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get into <laughs> the spiral. Oh, I can't get, <laughs> oh, get down low enough. Never mind. Never mind. Spiral of life. <laughs> Do we only have one weight plate left? Okay. All right, what's our time off bottom? An hour and a half to surface, so 6.30? Yep. <coughs> For everybody watching online, I heard you all saw an octopus. Very jealous, I was asleep. <laughs> I have to watch the recap. So where are a few people watching? Someone just said, yay for you, but boo for my need to sleep. Because <laughs> they missed it. <laughs> Me too. Right, Same, it's okay. I'm sure it was logged as a highlight. Hmm. Is, uh, is Chris Kelly joining any Nautilus expeditions this year? Someone is just curious. Uh, he's joining us right this moment from shore. <laughs> <laughs> no, on the, not on the ship anytime though? Um, I, I do not know the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, folks can go to the Nautilus Live webpage and go to the expeditions tab oh. and look at that is true. expeditions and see who is associated with them. Can you do that for upcoming ones? I didn't know that. Uh, they get, aren't updated like fully. Right. Uh, they get updated more and more as that <laughs> expedition gets closer and closer. Mm -hmm. okay, but cool. some of okay. them, especially for <coughs> co-lead scientists, often that is updated. Good to know. And just to confirm, we are exploring around the final waypoint currently. Yes. I, that, I, that's me confirming it. So that was a soft <laughs> confirmation. But nobody said hard no. So <laughs> <laughs> must be right. So I can update this. Telephone. <laughs> Steve, it's for you. Okay. 
Okay, a little bit more rubbly on this side. As we're coming to the northeast. A lot of these are Chrysocortia, right? I believe so. Cool. Not all of them. I think the yellow one at the top left is a Plexarid. Is a Plexarid a type oh. of black coral or? Um, hold on. We have someone um, who is, looks like, I guess, in high school and just wanted to ask what everybody does in uh, in here. So maybe we'll do a quick uh, introduction around the room. Sure. So I'm Shelby Johnson Rodney. I'm a marine conservationist science communicator, and I'm a science communication fellow here on the ship. My name is Annabelle. I am a microbiology student uh, about to complete my undergrad, uh, and I am with the science party on the ship. Great. We'll come back to Beth in a moment. Mm -hmm. I'm Diane, and uh, I'm the data logger currently here in the command center, and my position is science manager in training. So this is my first cruise. Very excited to be here. Thanks. And up in the front row, this is Steve in the video chair. I control uh, the cameras on the ROVs and on the ship and control what's being broadcast out to you. This is Ashton. I'm also in the front row. I am an ROV engineering intern, and I am learning to fly Atalanta and work on Atalanta. I'm Trevor. I'm piloting Hercules ROV. I'm Lynette, and I'm a mapper and navigator. We can keep ship moves going, I think. Okay. Okay. Bridge nav. Can we do another step? Five zero meters bearing zero eight zero, please. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, great. Beth, we just did a round the room, um, but I know you're on the phone. If you wanted to just introduce yourself quickly. Oh, okay. Um, Hi to everybody in the van. Uh, I am Beth Orcutt. I am a senior research scientist at the Bigelow Laboratory for Ocean Sciences in East Booth Bay, Maine. And I study microbes living in the deep sea. All right, can you zoom in on that star, please? More sea stars. Yay, my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> so if anybody's tuning in recently, we are Exploring Mercury Seamount in the Papahanamoa Kuakea Marine National Monument. Oh, it looks like there's some uh, maybe stoloniferin there attached to the rock just to the left of the oh, star. Oh, yes, I didn't oh, even see wow. that one. Yeah. Did not see that. Right there. Um, Thanks. And uh, yeah, we are coming towards the end of our 24 hour dive here at the site. We made it all the way through our planned dive track, and so now we're getting to explore a little bit further. Yay, Osco confirmed that I got it right. Stolen Ephraim. <laughs> uh, someone's wondering if the rocks we're seeing um, are volcano basalt at all, or are they something different? Um, most likely they are uh, Volcanic material, mo uh, probably basalt, but sometimes on these dives on seamounts, we found other types of igneous materials um, that aren't necessarily true basalts, mm -hmm. um, have higher silicate content. Um, we also are approaching the flat top geo of this seamount, which often is paved in carbonate reefs. And um, sometimes those pieces break off in big chunks and then they get covered up with this black ferromanganese crust. So sometimes we can be deceived 
thinking we are looking at an igneous rock and then we pick it up and squish it and it's actually carbonate. Mm. <laughs> oh, Lynette, got a question for you if you have a second. Are you on SPL? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, someone's just wondering what your background is um, as uh, the navigator slash mapper. In what the is your computer program. wallpaper? <laughs> um, uh, so I am currently a grad student at the University of New Hampshire, um, and I am in programs for computer science and ocean engineering, ocean mapping, um, and I work at the Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping at the University of New Hampshire. Um, so we do a lot of operating sonars and mapping the seafloor. Do you, for the ocean mapping that you do, do you do, I know nothing about ocean, map, ocean mapping, but do you do like simulations of the seafloor? No. Um, so there's a few different ways to map the seafloor. Um, the big sort of low resolution images that you see of the deep sea is also often satellite altimetry. Um, and so they're using, um, gosh, I don't know that much about satellite altimetry, um, satellite images and um, models of gravity, basically, to try to determine where there are maybe. I kind of want to ask. Sea. Hold on one second. Uh, Trevor, how far away are we from that sea star we imaged? And is uh, it something that we could go back to? <laughs> and sample, or uh, there's interest in the stoloniferans we saw to the left of them. Ah, uh, for sampling again. Potentially. Uh, let's find out. It's like a quick rewind here. I know. <laughs> I know. He's like backing up very fast. I think we at least uh, got some I good stills of it. No, I don't know. Hi, this is Malanai from the studio. We have a question from one of the students. How long does it take to build an ROV? Build an ROV? Yeah. Depends on your budget. Depends <laughs> on the budget. <laughs> okay, if, if we, this seems like a big backup to yeah, try to sample. I'm what just trying to go a long way and then I'll just follow my track and awesome. see what I can find. I actually missed my track, so if I go on the right spot, it'll be easier to find. We were still building momentum, so we haven't moved very far yet. Okay, maybe we want to pause the ship's move, Lynette? Sure. Bridge, nav. Can we hold position here, please? Thank you. Everyone keep your eyes peeled. Yeah. All right, where are you, Star? I think it was farther back than that. Okay. Hmm, unless it's right here. There it is. Yeah. Okay, we can, we can sample that. Okay. Do we have a slurp open? Uh, we do have lots of slurps open. The problem is our nozzle has uh, some bits oh, in it. Nozzle clog. Do you oh. think it'll slurp off that rock, or do you think I should have to sample the rock? Good um, question. I don't know. I don't know that we can sample the rock. Oh, yeah. In terms of somewhere to stow it. Roger. Uh, zoom in, please. Have we tried, like tapping the nozzle on the rock to try to get those uh, Paragorgia pieces out? Yeah, but I can poke at it a little bit. Okay. Come wide, please. And can I see craft arm? Is it something that can't be flushed out of the Not slurp? really. Not really. Can you change my camera over to bucket? Yeah. Please. Is there a blow function there's on no, the suction? There's no, no blow function. Would you like porch light? Oh, sure. What the heck? Hold so on one second, uh, Trevor. I just want to confirm what we're trying to sample here. Are we trying to sample the star or the stolen Ephraim? Can you run it on flush, please? I don't know, 70%, something like that? Yeah. Roger. All right, we're on I think 70%. we're actually maybe trying to collect the star. Oh, Roger. Might have got that, actually. We'll see. Oh, nice. Well, we can clean out the slurp anyway. Yeah. 
Perry Blaster is definitely an echinoderm. Whoa, whoop, whoop. Chris, if you're listening, can you confirm that you would like the sea star sampled, not the uh, stoloniferin? Well, yeah, it looks nice and clean in there. Yeah, yeah but it, looks it, good. it disappeared from there and went where? <laughs> <laughs> That's the real mystery. Oh, uh, there's a request for both. Oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they are working you this morning, Trevor. Yeah. Well, if we've, if we've, go ahead, if we've already got the uh, slurp arm uh, attempted to clean, maybe we can start with that first. Okay, you want to slurp the sto stolonif stoloniferin? Yes, stoloniferin okay. to the left of the starfish. It's going to go in. Okay, you can stop the slurp and then All right. switch to a sample jar, which is which one? Uh, we're talking slurp jar? Yeah. How about two? Two, Roger. All right. There might be a pink coral that ends up in there, too, or there might be everything stuck in the tube. We'll see. <laughs> Have we gotten a you couple of close uh, stills okay. on that? We have it zooms. Again. Okay, yes. good. There we go. Especially of the stolen ephraim, since we're yep. gonna mangle it a little bit. Okay, before I get slurpy, we'll go zoom there, please. Get slurpy. Do we want another tight zoom on it? Sure. Yes, please. Okay. Standing by on slurp. Roger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try a bump down. Roger. Hey. Nicely done. Wow. OK, uh, let's uh, go for it then. Can you come out a little bit, please? What yeah, percentage right would you like to start with? I don't know, 50? All right, bumping to 50. We are at 50. Hmm. I'm going to have to scrape it off. Is that OK? Yep. Oh, oh it looks like we have a squat oh. lobster trying to cut oh, it, no. too. <laughs> Tough. Oh. 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 Wow, that is some strong hold fast. <laughs> yeah, this might not be very effective, but oh, maybe no. we'll get a couple. Yeah. Oh, do we have a view of the slurp canister there? Yeah. Uh, Just above the jaws on the bottom screen. Uh, Seeing a couple, to a couple, couple, couple are coming in. <laughs> couple are getting coming off. Okay. Yeah, that's I think all that's I good. Do. Okay, we come full wide, please. Yep, there's definitely a couple in there. Yeah, there's a few in there. Okay, let's keep that running for an extra, I don't know, 30 seconds or so. All right. And uh, where can we put the sea star, Diane? I'd prefer in the front box, but uh, those are your. That's own. not possible we have microbiology samples in there ah uh, yes yeah that's Kay. a good great question we're gonna have to put it with the uh the coral and foxtrot okay uh you can stop the slurp please and you can send it back to flush okay I'll slurp stopped going back to flush sorry i killed your thing <laughs> let me just change all the cameras at once thank you oh there. yeah cool okay oh. let's flush it later uh, zoom in again, please, Steve. I don't know how I'm going to sample this without squeezing them to nothingness. Mm. Oh. oh. This is why I like doing the forward box with this, with the suction. But if you want me to try, I'll go for it. Nice low grip force. Can you grab the rock that it's attached to? Uh, possibly. Can you okay. come out a little bit, please? Keep going. Good there. How big is the rock that it's on? About 20 centimeters. Oops. Excavation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. While the rocks themselves might be easy to get, we don't have anywhere to put them. Roger. Um, because we are full up on our sampling containers. Mm. Mm. 
I could, yeah, if I can grab the rock, I maybe can shake the star off when I'm over there. I don't know. Okay, that's worth trying. Just a shot. This, this rock thought, seems yeah. very eh. brittle. Yeah. Okay. If I move him out of the way, hey, out of the way, I say. Okay, that's spring loaded. Fine. <laughs> Oh, good morning from Harvard University Deep Sea Biology class. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Send in questions if you have them. Let's try this, see what happens. Uh -huh. OK, come wide, please. Do you want an image first, or are we good? Uh, quick, Just, yeah, quick image would be great. OK, stand by. Okay, Steve, go ahead. And is it very bad if I drop this rock in there? And in which one are we going Fox in? Fox I think. I don't think it's terrible. Okay, I'll try to not, but see what happens. Okay, yep. come wide, please. Is that the one that the crinoid is in? Or the no, coral? No, it's in the coral. coral. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting to think about what the sea star might be eating, as we've seen on our, a lot of our previous dives. They usually are mm -hmm. climbing up bamboo corals and chomping away. Not a lot in sight here. Could it's it be eating the stolen Kind of stuck in that little crevice. Um, I don't know. Mm. Oh, yeah, here we go. Someone has a geology question. Can we get colum columnar basalt formed columnar. in the deep? Columnar, thank you. Basalt formed in the deep ocean. Yes, you can. Um, <clears throat> so columnar basalt just refer well refers to a couple things, but uh, visually it's very striking. Uh, kind of looks often like a hexagonal, octagonal uh, formation. Mm -hmm. um, and it gives you an indication of the way that the rock was formed. Um, and we do see that sometimes. We see broken columnar basalts on the seafloor. Um, sometimes they're difficult to sample, though, because they're often quite large, okay, open the box, which please. means they're also quite heavy. And uh, we're often okay, limited there. in the spaces that we can put them. Yeah. Nice. So if you're watching in channel three, you can see how we're trying to place our specimen into our, one of our bio boxes. Our bio boxes are already full with other samples, so we're trying to see if we can just <laughs> <laughs> gently encourage our sea star to release itself from this rock. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> there are other specimens in the bio box. Well, yep. I would highly recommend just dropping the rock, but I can keep trying scraping if you'd rather. No, it's okay. I think we're, we're, we're okay going to take our chance. Yep. I think. Okay. Letting go of the rock. Okay, thank you. We can close the box. All right. This is a sampling heavy <laughs> <laughs> shift. <laughs> yeah. Beginning of the shift, too. Uh, let's go back. Uh, 102 was that coral that we sampled. 103 was the slurp of the Stoloniferin that we just did next to the sea star, mm -hmm. and then 104 is the star. <sighs> okay. And we can go ahead sense? and restart the ship's move. So we think that sea star was a um, peribolaster genera, um, but we have some affiliated scientists who are interested in sea stars. Um, so hopefully they'll be able to confirm that. And for anybody who's interested in what happens to these animal specimens, they are all archived for sending to the Museum for Comparative Zoology, which is also at Harvard University, um, nice. which we've got the deep sea group joining us from. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, scientists from all over the world can request uh, to examine those specimens or to get subsamples of those specimens. 
for their analyses. Yes. And just a reminder, someone's just wondering what was collected. It was a sea star, but it was attached to a rock. Didn't want to come off. So we just um, collected them both. Um, so it'll be logged so, primarily as yep. an animal yep. sample, but there's <laughs> yes. a bonus rock. There's a bonus rock. <laughs> uh, more of a ship question, how good is the food? Um, pretty great, I would say. Um, we do get full meals three times a day, um, but we do have the opportunity to uh, snack in between. People, they put desserts on the tables. The galley team is... Uh, really awesome on the ship, and we are very grateful for them. <laughs> they keep us very well fed. They do indeed. Trevor, do I need to keep coming around to port? The heading indicator here just, your heading indicator just went the opposite way. Uh, I want to make sure I'm. What? What's the question? Uh, what direction do you want me to go? Actually, never we're, mind. I think. We're facing 070, so you should, that's a general. General guideline of where you should look, but just keep me in frame. Yeah, sorry, I thought you were doing a 360 below me for a second. No. Okay. Also, your auto heading's off. Yeah, Lynette, I just when turned you have it off. A moment, can we come out Thanks. on high back? Yeah, can we turn porch light off? Yeah, just a moment. Got it. Kay. Thank you. It's off. It oh. is off, yeah. Roger. Why don't you turn porch side off, Steve? If only I could. Uh, someone's wondering um, about how many years it takes to develop uh, the ferromanganese crust on these rocks. Um, it can take tens, hundreds of thousands of years, like a long, 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 <laughs> long time. Um, there might be instances where it will occur a little bit faster, but in general, we think that the precipitation of these metals out of the water or out of poor water, if they're over sediment, um, takes quite a long time. So, as usual, we're seeing that large boulders tend to be uh, good places for higher densities of animals, especially at the top of these pseudo-summits. Oh, Trevor, this might be a good candidate for your oh, I know. favorite <laughs> shot. Oh, I know. <laughs> This tree after all those samples. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, coming into the center of the frame as a type of Chrysogorgia. Spirally. Aridogorgia. That have these lovely spirals. Mm -hmm. It looks like the uh, crinoid that we sampled from this angle. A little bit, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, a few more. Oh, a lot more feathers. <laughs> a lot more feathers, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, deeper down on this same seamount, we saw a lot of bottle brush Chrysogorgia, like everywhere. Now we're seeing more of these Aridogorgia types. Beautiful patterns. Uh, quick answer for the deep sea bio class. The two green dots that you're seeing are lasers that are coming from Hercules. They um, give us sort of an indication of measurement. They're 10 centimeters apart, so it's really helpful. Um, sometimes we have them on so we can get a rough measurement of different animals and rocks that we see or are wanting to sample. Um, and then sometimes we turn them off when we're trying to get good stills of different things that we're seeing um, just so we can get a clear picture. And as we're coming up into the water column, they're also helpful for gauging how much particulate matters in the water. That's right. Uh, the more you can see the lines, uh, the more sort of uh, matters in the water, more turbid. And then if it's just the two dots, then you can uh, pretty much say that it's clear water or relatively clear water.
Um, someone wondering uh, just uh, what sort of our priorities and what we're currently trying to find as samples. So uh, a lot of the rock samples are going to be used for aging the seamounts, and um, but they're also used for uh, if they're right, <laughs> the right kind for Beth uh, for her microbial work, um, and then. Some of the animals that we collect are really helpful if they're poorly understood. Um, some of our scientists ashore are helping us a lot by identifying what we're seeing in these videos as we are exploring the ocean floor and they give us an indication if something is uh, worth sampling and we try our best to get it for them and it gives us uh, hopefully a better understanding once it gets to shore and is Should able to be please? looked at. Um, and then sometimes if it's something that's super cool and we've never seen before, and we're able to take it, then uh, what we a may mess. get a sample for that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like something else might have been there first that made an extremely large hold fast. <laughs> and now we've got some other smaller corals that have attached, and then they have been come overrun with basket stars and brittle stars. That is a Very mess. opportunistic. I was just about to say that, Diane. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, hop on it. So, why would a coral attach to an old animals hold fast instead of a new rock. Might be easier to attach. Okay. I'd buy that. Maybe that's just where it landed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, I guess this is where we're settling. This is home now. <laughs> and no problem, uh, Pete G from the class <laughs> saying good morning. You're welcome for that answer. Uh, next dive. Next dive, I think, will be 4 p.m. Hawaii time, but somebody correct me on that if that's not right. Yep. That that's right. So it'll be us again. Yep. <laughs> we'll be back, guys. It's a blue water kind of day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> Which means you Listen might. to that excitement. <laughs> <laughs> Which means you might get a lot of us <laughs> lathering on about nonsense. Yeah. Or we might get some trivia. There you go. Trivia okay, so facts five zero up. meters we get, bearing get trivia zero during blue water. Zero, please. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe we can get Annabelle on some facts during the blue water. That'd be fun. Gosh, okay. I need some factoids. You know I'll, me. I'll I gotta make a have list a story during lunch. Line. <laughs> Thank you. So, for this dive, we're we have already achieved majority of our objectives um, and so we are just continuing to explore even though we've met the end of our waypoint list so we're coming down from the pseudo summit on this ridge feature we've been climbing for the last 20 or so hours Oh, this is an interesting question. I'm not sure, actually. Uh, does EV Nautilus ever help in artificial reef development to help rebuild the ecosystem? I'm not sure. I don't know if I've ever heard, but I don't know. Most artificial reef building work would happen in shallower, shallower waters. Shallower, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't um, think. <laughs> that is not the prime zone for EV Nautilus to operate in, but it could. Um, but typically that work is done by... Um, other types of vessels. Mm -hmm. Good question. Thanks for that question, Lewis. And I don't know that there's much work to try to rebuild deep sea, mm -hmm. deep sea corals. Right. Yeah. And if you would define them as a reef. Um, yeah. So that's so true. Yeah. Is that a fish coming into view? I think so. Looks like so it. Yeah. Something. Uh, question, are there any active lava flows nearby? What about vents? And would you expect to see some around this area it's from the class? Um, the short answer is no. Uh, so the only active area uh, in this region that I'm aware of is around the Hawaiian hotspot um, and the Luihi Seamount, um, which has a new name now and I keep forgetting. Um, which is southeast of the Big Island of Hawaii, um, that is sitting over the current Hawaiian hotspot. 
Um, and then obviously <laughs> the mountains of Mauna Loa, mm -hmm. Mauna Kea on the Big Island um, are the only active ones in this region. The seamounts that we're diving on are presumed to be quite old, um, you know, 40 million years plus, let's say. Um, so there's no active hydrothermal activity out here uh, or volcanic activity. Yeah, that would be wild to see a deep sea lava <laughs> below. They're really wild. There were some recent expeditions um, I don't know the name of the expedition, but I know that uh, Roxanne Beinart, who's a scientist at University of Rhode Island, is part of a team that's been exploring the seafloor around uh, Tonga and the area where the volcanic eruption happened um, mm -hmm. earlier this year. That's worth doing some internet searching for, see what they've seen in yeah. terms of the impacts of that uh, very recent deep sea volcanic activity on the benthos in that area. Mm. I believe that fish we just saw was in the family Macroridae. So, in our Scientist to Shore portal, where we're getting expert conversation about what we're seeing and not seeing on this expedition so far. So if any of you are joining us on the NA-134, Lua Ea Ahiki'i Ke Kapapaku expedition um, in November, December of last year, one of the really striking things we saw were polyopagon sponges. Um, could get really big, like the size of the front of ROV Hercules. Um, and other types of coral species. And one of the things we're, we've been remarking on is that on these seamounts that are f on this northern side of the Papahanamoa Kuakea Marine National Monument, um, we haven't really seen any of those polyopagon sponges, very few, if any. Um, so there's definitely some uh, biogeographic patterns that we're observing between these two expeditions. Um, and for anybody that is interested in what those polyopagon sponges look like, definitely check out the NA-134 expedition page on the Nautilus Live website. There's some really great videos um, archived on that page to show you some of those. Really quite spectacular. How do we determine the number of waypoints um, that we're going to run through? Does it just depend on how far we're going on the ridge and is spread out there that way? Or you have a sort of goal number when we get to a location? That's a, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's no magic uh, formula for that. Um, so often we're thinking about things about like, how long do we want to dive to be? Mm -hmm. How much, uh, ground do we want to cover? Uh, do we need to sample with some frequency? Mm -hmm. um, and so we use all of that to inform our decision. The waypoints um, often are set on uh, high points along the track because the seafloor is not just like one right. continuously linear slope, but mm -hmm. maybe a series of little hops. Um, sometimes we set them at defined lateral distances, like every 500 meters. Mm. Um, on this expedition, we've also been kind of targeting the depth zone between about 25 to 1,500 meters, um, sometimes a little shallower, sometimes a little deeper, depending on where we are and what the ridges look like. Um, and so that's about, let's say, a, uh, a kilometer's worth of lateral distance. Mm -hmm. We put in about nine to 10 waypoints and then kind of break that up so we can, it also helps every shift kind of know the pacing 
like how far they should be trying to get, if they're stopping to smell the roses, uh, <laughs> metaphorically, a little too much. Um, yeah, but it every dive can be a little different depending right. on the objectives. Bridge nav. Can we move five zero meters, bearing zero five zero, please? Thank you. Uh, Bioclass is wondering what are those little critters on the rocks that look like little golf tees? <laughs> <laughs> Can we also get a partial on that? Uh, the little white stubs that look like golf tees are uh, often cup corals, type of hard coral. Oh, those also they sort of look they like said the, uh, the golf tees. Things that look like golf tees. Oh, that wasn't the one that we sampled? They were talking about the white ones on the rocks, I think, cup corals. Raj. Yeah. Zoom in there, please. So this I like looks that like analogy a of golf tees. I never thought about it, but it's very good. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, looks like a tube no. anemone. We've collected we one have. of those on our previous dive. Is this an Ursula? Is this something different? This is not an Ursula. I think it's an Ursula, yeah. Oh, sorry, this is a pom pom anemone, yeah. not a tube mm -hmm. anemone. A pom pom, got it. Still waking up here. Thanks, Trevor and hey Stephen. You. We can keep moving. We haven't really seen a lot of bubblegum coral in this area, have we? No. Mm -mm. For anybody interested at home, we're at roughly a depth of 1450 meters, 1450, and uh, our oxygen concentration has been going up a little bit as we've been sinking down from that pseudo summit. We were a little shy of 30 micromolars, now we're up to 35 micromolar oxygen. Can we get a partial zoom on this? Go ahead. This is a little slightly different than what we've seen Kind of droopy. I think this is a metallogorgia, maybe? I'll wait for some confirmation from our scientists ashore. It's beautiful. It's so sparkly. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also that flat shape that uh, Asuka was so interested in. Thanks. Thank you for that. So we saw another one a few minutes ago. Uh, there's a couple of them up here. So it's a different type of Chrysogorgia that has this stalk with a little fan on the end. There's a little back and forth with our scientists ashore identifying that. So So Lynette on high pack 
the uh, contour you've marked as path. Is that the one you're trying to bring us to? Yeah, okay. I'm trying to just swing us out a little bit to the east and then we'll head north. Yeah, wonderful. Up to that. That looks great, thanks. Okay. Yep. So for anybody interested, today is the midpoint of the cruise. It's one of the longer Nautilus expeditions. Ooh, ooh. Oh. Already at the midpoint? How, I know. how can it be so? We've been working. <laughs> I feel like we just got on the boat, but I also feel like I can't remember my life before getting on it. <laughs> <laughs> what that is, is one of the great mysteries of going to sea <laughs> and these kinds of cruises. <laughs> oh, what wow. Is, what, and we're very fortunate out here after having passed all our COVID tests oh, yeah. Yeah. that we have been able to largely operate without having to worry about that out here but that's going to be something we have to contend with when we get back yep yeah back to the basics another one of these <laughs> hey is that the same crinoid mm -hmm. i believe so, I think so yeah. one of the features to figure out who they are is also by looking at the back a little bit to see what the color is but um, i do believe that's a similar crinoid to what we collected earlier i'm just noticing the forked feathers which i don't see on them usually yeah that's cool good good eyes good Steve. catch This is a very large Ritagorgia. Yeah, a nice long one. We can really see the spiral. It's pretty. The one to the left is like, hey, what about me? <laughs> <laughs> Do we know what kind of octopus was observed earlier in the dive? I can take a peek back through some of the comments and try and find out. Yeah. I heard it may have been a Dumbo. And that's what I. That's okay. also oh, speculation oh that way. I heard. <laughs> I'm so sad. They had the, uh, I too heard that. Ear-like fins. Okay. I really hope someone used the octopus emoji on the telestrator <laughs> when that happened. <laughs> I mean, these are the real concerns, right? <laughs> Definitely missed opportunity if they didn't. Who needs an emoji when you have the real thing, though? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> what a bizarre feature of that equipment <laughs> to be able to place emo emojis on this. <laughs> <laughs> You can do a lot. You can also like put a basketball court and draw up plays with X's and O's, you know. Right, sure. <laughs> There's a lot. I can see that, you know, it's designed for sports. But uh, I can't see the, yeah, the sea creatures. I can't see the sea creatures being very practical. <laughs> Whoa, here we go. Here's uh, oh, the whole wow. gallery. Whoa. Whoa. It's like a garden. It's of a them. garden and for sure. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six on top of that rock. Yeah. Plus a Victor Gorge in the background. Exactly. And, purple. Yeah. and then a Venus. No, that's an anemone. Yeah. Some sort. So red Gorgias. What are the what are the other ones? The little red fans at the bottom might be the Swiftia we collected earlier. Or it's hard mm -hmm. to tell from this view. What's that fluffy pink one in the top just slightly right? I believe that's another type of Chrysogorgia. Okay. More like the bottle brush. And we got this yellow one over here too. That's, yep. a, that's a good rock. Oh, like oh. Sorin. It's a popular rock. I'm very glad you're good with the names of these. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know that I am. <laughs> uh, I'm trying my best to learn. <laughs> We've got some cheat sheets Bridge in the back math. here to help us. You don't have to ru ruin or reveal your secrets. Can we move five zero meters bearing zero four zero, please? Thank you. Uh, front row, um, folks are wondering if they can see the manipulator in the camera. I will leave that up to the pilots if that's something sure, they can show the you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so our, if you're watching Channel 3 or um, 
the lower left quad. We can maybe try to put up one of those manipulator views. <laughs> we don't have any other cameras on the manipulator right now. But in channel one, it's in the corner. Yeah. Best way to see the manipulator oh, would be I see. see some go. highlights, I think. Oh, Deep Sea Bio class signing off. All right, have a good day, everyone. See ya. For some reason, I was thinking they wanted to look at your hands. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Imagine if I walked around just calling my hands by manipulator. That would, not, <laughs> would not be all right. That's a little spooky and creepy. Okay. Yeah, we'd have to have a talk. I'm like, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> also, what's going like on? The, the manipulator arm is what the predator? Is that right? The uh, yeah, the brand craft, craft no. predator. Craft yeah. is the brand. Predator is the model. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Did anyone find anything out about that nine function they were talking about? No, it Still was a mystery. definitely a seven <laughs> function. Yeah, okay. I Googled it, and then I also clicked on the link that they had sent, but it was, it said seven function. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I also could have read that incorrectly, I, but I trust you, Annabelle. It did, it did look like a seven. <laughs> Yes, this is an ROV. Someone's like, I'm confused. This is an ROV. Uh, we are not in the deep sea right now. We are on a ship from a control van. Um, these are not manned uh, submersibles. Crude. <laughs> Crude. Crude, sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so this is an ROV. Our pilots are controlling them. There are two. Can we get a partial see. zoom on this? I think it's yeah. near to Gorgia, but I just want to double check. Go ahead, Steve. And one you can't see, uh, which is at Atlanta, which is yeah. uh, hovering okay. above. It's just a small rid of gorgia. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Very delicate. I still feel like I'm holding my breath after all that sampling. <laughs> <at> the beginning, <laughs> that was kind of edge of your seat. Yeah. Woof. I was sweating with the crinoid sample. I was like, don't fly away. I couldn't believe how crumbly it was. Yeah. I did not expect it to be that crumbly. Yeah, Chris yeah. was commenting that that's a common problem with sampling crinoids. Yeah, they're the stalks are not as pliable as you would think. They're yeah. mm. a delicate little flower. Oh. <laughs> oh. So we're coming over a texture that kind of looks like a sheet flow as we're coming down the side of this pseudo summit. indication of different lava conditions when the seamount was formed. Didn't come out as a big eru uh, you know, eruptive pillows, but more like a slowly moving sheet flow. How In long would ways, something like this flow underwater before it totally hardened up? That's a good question. Um, and I don't know the answer. Um, thinking that a good place to understand that is actually on the big island of Hawaii. Um, they're uh, often thought to be kind of two different types of flow that's seen there. This sheet-like flow, which I believe is called Pahoe Hoi uh, in Alelo, Hawaii, uh, whereas the more eruptive bulbousy shape is a uh, type in um, and so there uh, on the big island, you have places where lava is coming into the ocean uh, right near the surface, and it's easier mm -hmm. to see than <laughs> uh, Zoom in, please. Happen happening to be on the seafloor when eruptions are happening. But I don't know how long they flow. 
That's the dream, happening to be on the seafloor when an eruption happens. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's the dream. That's part of the motivation for the regional cabled array, which is off the coast of Oregon in the Thank United you. States. There's a lot of observatory instrumentation uh, in the regional cabled array that is on the axial volcano. Um, part of the motivation there is that some of those sensors may be early warning systems of eruptive events that are about to happen, so that uh, scientists and managers can mobilize res rapid response uh, to see or quickly respond to eruptive events. So we've got a little over an hour left of this dive on the seafloor before we begin ascending. We're slowly moving down in depth off this little pseudo summit and we're gonna follow a contour further northeast along this elongated ridge feature on Mercury Seamount. Do you know what the game plan is for the next day or two? Uh, still being worked out, but I think the general plan is uh, we're recovering at 8 a.m. today in a two and a half hours. Uh, we will do a short mapping transit to Loudoun Seamount, which is further south of here, mm -hmm. uh, and launching again around 4 p.m. Hawaii time today. Okay. Uh, what is unclear is how long that dive will be. I'm guessing it's going to be 16 hours. Dwight had put up on the board kind of 24 because that's what we were. We wouldn't think it would be longer than 24, but I think it'll actually only be 16. Okay. So we're waiting for Dwight and Rennie to confirm uh, that with the dive plan when they Bridge get up now. for breakfast. Roger. Then after Can we move Loudon. five zero meters bearing zero two zero, please. Thank you. Uh, we'll probably be done on this western fork and begin our longer transit over to the eastern fork again to do several dives over there. Sounds good. Haven't seen one of these in a while. One of these long bamboo whips. Mm -hmm. Bamboo coral. Are we? We are within Papahana, uh, local Camp Murray National Monument. Trying um, to do a polyp zoom there, Steve. Exploring um, some deep sea mounts, um, and we've been out here for a little while—12 um, days, maybe more than that. Oops. Steve, can you pull up the Chief Sai computer on channel three? I'd like to show a map of the Papahanamoa Kuakea Marine National Monument. Roger. Uh, one moment. Yeah. Yep, and you're good. Yep. There we are. Uh, so for our audience member that asked a question about where we are, uh, this is a map of the region that we are in, uh, which is on the papahanamoakuakea.gov website. Papahanamoakuakea is a marine national monument that surrounds the northwestern Hawaiian island chain, uh, beginning in the east around Nihoa. And following to the northwest, all the way out to the Kure Atoll, uh, Olaniku, and um, 
We are diving on a series of seamounts that are north of uh, this region, Lesan Island, Kamole. There's a series, you can't see it in the map. Um, this is only showing you surface features in this map, but we're in that region, just with inside the boundary of the Papanamoa Kuikea. Um, if you'd like to learn more about this national monument, definitely go check out this webpage, papahanamoakuakea.gov. Um, it is the largest marine protected area in uh, U.S. waters, and it's also uh, a special type of marine protected area in that it protects both natural and cultural resources because of the very important um, cultural connection, mm -hmm. Native Hawaiian and Polynesian communities to this region. Um, Steve, you can pull up something else for Channel 3 while I look for another map I'd like to show. Roger. I wasn't quite ready. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I, I thought about something else on the fly. I think that uh, light blue map is on that site. Let me see if I can. Oh, there's sea star there on the middle of the screen. Yeah, I wanted to pull up our expedition map. Oh, okay. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> do you guys do anything similar to astronauts when you explore previously uncharted territory down below? No, we do not plant flags. <laughs> we do not plant flags. Hercules boot prints sometimes. <laughs> yeah, that's maybe the most you'll get. Um, we want to, you know, also, you know, sample what we need to sample, but, you know, leave things as undisturbed as we can. So we don't leave any s flags or things <laughs> um, other than the occasional um, weight plate <laughs> if we've collected some heavy things, but those will naturally uh, dissolve and um, are not uh, really harmful to the environment. We do not only uh, have Argus and Hercules on board. We have four, yes, ROVs <laughs> on board uh, total. We have Argus, Atlanta, uh, Big Hercules, which is the one we are using now, and Little Hercules on board. Okay, Steve, if you want to pull back up my computer for channel three. All right. So here we are uh, in channel three of the lower left quad. You're seeing the expedition page for this expedition on nautiluslab.org. And in this uh, um, uh, mapping image on the the left, you can see the Hawaiian Island chain and the Northwestern Hawaiian Island chain. And I'm zooming in on the region that we're in. Um, you can see this kind of forked seamount area. It's called the Lilio Kalani Ridge. Um, the red target's kind of just randomly in the middle. We're diving on this seamount right here, Mercury. Later on today, we'll start moving to this large seamount called Loudon. And then we'll start heading back over to the east to get some of these seamounts over here. Um, and while we're on this page, I'd just like to point out some really great new um, posts on this expedition page that you can find on Nautilus Live about some of the great diversity we've seen on the seamounts, but also a new um, video that was released by Ocean Exploration Trust in partnership with um, uh, communities in Hawaii. Oh, wow, look please. at that big slime star. Yeah. That's like the one, Ooh. yeah, Aww. we've seen this guy before, oh. that slime star. We yeah, have. I think we've collected one on a previous I dive. Know. These oh, may be my new favorite sea creatures. <laughs> oh, it's the brain with whiskers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> brain with whiskers. Whisker brain. It's a, 
look back <laughs> and on our IDs for that one. Um, but yeah, this new video here in the frame uh, was developed in partnership with the Papahanaumoa Kuakea Marine National Monuments Native Hawaiian Cultural Working Group um, and their collaborators uh, and developing materials in Alejo Hawaii, the Hawaiian language. Bridge um, nav. Can we move five zero meters bearing zero one zero, please? Thank you. And um, these videos are a great introduction to try to help strengthen that relationship of um, connecting culture with this space and also the deep sea of the Papahanaumoa Kuakea region, which is a, a sacred region for Native Hawaiian communities. Uh, but lots of great videos and other resources on the Nautilus Live webpage. Um, so definitely check those out. And Steve, you can put up whatever you like. Roger that. Channel three. Another Metalla Gorgia in the top left, just going out of the frame. Some Maruta Gorgia here in front of us. Do we ever capture audio? Uh, no, <laughs> to my knowledge, from what I learned a couple times ago. Um, all the sort of gadgets and engines and things on Hercules would be uh, too loud to really capture any quality audio when we're in the deep sea, but there are other entities that do. We have a nav question. Why does the navigator tell the bridge to move 50 meters in some bearing every so often? Is it because the ship is drifting? No. The uh, So our ship is equipped with a system called dynamic positioning, uh, which is a series of, I'm not going to explain this well, but it's essentially uh, <laughs> a tightly controlled thruster system that helps us keep station very uh, tightly and can also be used to move the ship. If you remember, maybe you don't know, or if you need a refresher, this, our exploration of the seafloor is a three vehicle collaboration mm -hmm. between the ship, a tether a cable that is from the ship to the Atalanta ROV, and then from the Atalanta ROV to the ROV Hercules, which is on the seafloor. And so we ha if we want to move the ROV, forward beyond a small area, we need to have the ship move to then pull the cable, to then pull ROV at Atalanta mm -hmm. and pull ROV Hercules to that destination. Um, we can't do that very fast. Uh, and so we make incremental steps as we want to make these transits. And so our navigator is working with the bridge who is in control of the dynamic positioning system to say, please move ahead, you know, another right. 50 meters mm -hmm. uh, in this heading, and that will then set up ROV Atalanta and ROV Hercules to get into a particular position. So if we were looking at high pack in channel three, please, Stephen. If, uh, 
if you're looking at the quad view on Nautilus Live or Channel 3, you can see um, uh, kind of our location on the seafloor in relation to um, a very zoomed in bathymetric map. Each of these uh, contour lines is uh, 10 meters. Um, and what you can see here is the movement of the ship, that arc that uh, our navigator has been working with the bridge to set up. And then you can see the icon for ROV Hercules with a red line and the blue line. So you can see that as the ship is moving to the northeast, ROV Hercules and ROV Atlanta are kind of following that same trajectory. It deviates a little bit because we do have some thrusters on ROV Hercules to drive where we would like within a, a a certain radius. Uh, but yeah, so that's what the navigator is doing. It's helping to get us set up in the right position, mm -hmm. working with the bridge. Sometimes they ask the bridge to hold position if we're going to be sampling. They might tell the bridge to go back <laughs> where we were <laughs> if we miss something. Yep. Holding position. Um tends to be really good when we're trying to get a closer look at something or see if we want to sample something and we need to stay put for a little while. Can you zoom in on this rock, mm -hmm. please? The weird grayness to it. Yeah, it does look strange. Um, exactly. Because you got to remember that the ROVs are kind of like on a long pendulum below the ship, so we need to be thoughtful about where the ship is. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. That's gray. <laughs> like a sea lichen. Weird. Mm. Okay, a thanks. tiny little urchin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if that's even what that was. All right, Trevor, find us an octopus. <laughs> okay, I'm on my way. Okay. <laughs> this way. Out away. Ah. Oh, here's a good question. Someone's wondering: Is it more common to see gatherings of the same species or a varied species? I feel like we've seen both, but. Some rocks have had, I think we just came across that rock that had all of those really big crinoids on it, mm -hmm. um, but they also, also had some other um, animals mixed in there, but um, I feel like we've seen a little bit of both. So just to pop in there, that slime star, the purple, mm -hmm. rainy, fun, uh, <laughs> whiskered one, ter terasteridae, um, which with a little P in the front, P T E R A. So in my mind, like aster, so star, and then Terra Earth star. If you need a way to remember it, that's the family. Mm. And uh, genus was uh, identified previously on another um, dive as the hymenaster. So I don't know species, but that's from my notes from the other dive. Just to give you guys a little update. Cool. Thank cool, you. Yeah. Yeah, you're, w you're welcome. If you're wondering what I do over here, <laughs> 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 I'm trying to... Uh, Bridge log a lot of that information and then uh, in can the we move five zero log. meters due north? Thank you. Can we get a close up of that red crinoid? Yeah, please? we can. We've been seeing so many cool crinoids on this dive. Yeah, oh, awesome. Yeah. Okay, Steve, go ahead. Whoa, that's pretty bright red. Oh, wow. Is this the first time we've seen one this bright? Bright red? I think we've seen it previously, but mm. I it's all a blur. <laughs> <laughs> Crinoid city everywhere. 
Yeah, and as Stephen pointed out, the one that we collected had the bifurcations at yeah. the tips uh, there, and this one does not. It does not, yeah, yeah. that was a good observation. Uh-huh. There's was. also something around the stem. What is that? Do we know? It's a little hydrozoan. Hydrozoan. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> we do have air conditioning on the ship. Yes, we do. <laughs> it is very cold in here, it's actually. It's so cold. <laughs> it's <laughs> perfect. Hello. <laughs> it's very important for the all of the systems, the computers. Um, they're working very hard, so they need to be cool. And then we also get air conditioning in our cabins and things like that. So yes, it's usually cool and to cold to freezing <laughs> on the ship. I feel like something just floated by at Atlanta Cam, but I could have been hallucinating. No, I missed <laughs> it. It was like super fast. <laughs> It's so interesting to see these like big sheets with only a couple of things attached to it. Mm -hmm. Has the Nautilus team ever discovered a previously unknown species on any of its expeditions? Pretty sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Evie Nautilus has been exploring for a long time. Soft, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> very long time. Um, so, abso absolutely. Uh, and Arctic, I'm not sure if uh, Evie Nautilus will be going up to the Arctic or Antarctic, but we know that's Diane's specialty. This ship is not <laughs> I don't think it's strengthened. <laughs> yeah, so I was just going to pop in there with places. that. Thank you. <laughs> Different ice class ratings. This one's is paper mache. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a reset, please? I had really never thought about that. I've thought about icebreaker ships and non-icebreaker ships, but I never thought about there being anything in between. <laughs> There's different classes the of icebreaker, too. Yeah, really? there are different classes of icebreaker. There's ice strength, and, and then there are various levels of icebreaker. Wild. Mm. When I was in the Arctic in 2020, there was, I saw some Arctic uh, icebreaker class tugboats that could do continuous five knots through a meter of ice. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like, what? I need to see that. Were they pointy? They were not that pointy. They were what? very, 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 very powerful, though. That is insane. Like thousands of horsepower. Do they, is it the same concept where they kind of go up on the ice and break down yes. into it? I'm, at five knots? I or are they don't like just know. Because they were, they were tug style, right? So they were yeah. very flat front bow, oh. so yeah. I'm not sure. Interesting. 
I sailed on the Swedish icebreaker Odin mm -hmm. once, and it had that square flat front that you're talking about. And yeah. they used a couple different strategies. One, if it was super thick, yeah, they'd ride up on top of it and smash through. Right. Mm -hmm. The other idea was they would come up to an ice floe if it was a little bit thinner and just uh, shoot the thrusters out in front and just kind of churn it up and mm -hmm. then just cut right through. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like all the way through. Wow. So, yeah, yeah, you could do that with kind of slushier ice. Mm. Yeah, the rating was a meter thick with with a 1%, 10% melted and refrozen top layer, which apparently matters differently. I don't know hmm. what that means. But you don't know if it's harder? I think it's, it's, that's uh, the extra level, yeah. Oh, when it refreezes, it's more difficult? To yeah, or something. Yeah, multi-year ice is more solid than fresh, fresh ice. There was a little fish off to our right. If you want to pan right, Trevor, I'm not sure if it's still there. There it is. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, little guy. I think this is another halosaur. We saw one of these earlier on the dive. Ooh. Yeah, catching a bit of a current here that makes it hard to turn left. Raj. And by left, I mean port. Because <laughs> I'm on a ship. <laughs> Good job. Nice. Bridge now. Thank you. Now everybody also knows what port means. If you didn't out there, <laughs> it's the left side of the ship. Do north, please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, there are 50 people on this ship, including the permanent crew or semi-permanent crew, and um, those of us who are guests for this expedition in particular, which I believe is the max for EV Nautilus, I think, 50 folks. I thought the max might be a little bit more. A little more? Like, how I know like there are a few open bunks, so. Like 60? Or not that's it. Yeah. Like 60? Maximum number of people on Nautilus? Yeah. Or I, like I thought it was bit. 48. Oh. 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 Well, well, well we have 50 <laughs> on now. Wait. <laughs> Roger. <laughs> and we have twice as many lifeboats as we need. So, this is do true. they just give you extra lifeboats <laughs> or do they give you exactly the right amount of lifeboats for the maximum number of people? <laughs> Hopefully extra, Hopefully huh? Hopefully extra. I think there's <laughs> double the amount of life boat slash safety equipment for the 50 berths. That's, That's what right. I heard. Okay. There are 50 berths? I think there's... The, our Nautilus FAQ back here says the ship capacity is 50 oh. Oh, okay. people. Oh, because of the forward berthing. Yeah, right. Oh. I think there's 52 berths, but 50 max capacity. Mm. Mm. That's what it is. Uh, yeah, they took two bunks out of the aft, one of the aft quads, and they added four up forward. Oh, right. Okay. Good was. math, good math. Here we go. So they went from 48 to 50, but, yeah, I don't oh, remember. 48 to 52. But, but minus two. Minus Sounds two. like we have to have at least two empty bunks. Those two empty bunks are currently sitting in a, in a, a uh, sea can at UH. Nice. There's two huh. mattresses and. Well, we when we have four empty ones on this expedition. Forward. Yes. That are not being used. The beds have been surprisingly comfortable, though. Yeah. That's that's been a pleasant surprise on this trip. Thank Trevor for a Home Depot run to get plywood last year. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys have a build a bunk or something? What? <laughs> what? Uh, what? What well, does that mean? Wait, what? Some of the some of the mattresses <laughs> were just on like springs that were uh, so it was a little bit droopy. We're not droopy. talking like box spring. We're talking like East German spring. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there was a bit of a hammock, you know, in the in some of the bunks. Mm. So when you, but uh, luckily, Trevor picked up some 
three quarter inch plywood <laughs> or something at a to level it Home out. Depot to put underneath and it's nice and firm now. Made Good. some slats, thank you. No, no slats, that's oh, no way slats. too hard just, to grab Just no. plywood. Cut to shape, yeah. I think the quads were already, they were already fine. They were a newer yeah. uh, cabin, so they had newer bunks. Plywood is a hot commodity right now, so. That's true. Great yeah. foresight. I'm Especially sure. in Hawaii, where you know, an island known for its lumber industry. Oh. Sarcasm. Yeah, it's not not known for its lumber industry. <laughs> Look what you did. <laughs> Plywood talk. Oh, someone's wondering, uh, any good books that uh, folks would recommend as an entry point to marine science for an aspiring scientist? Do you want to be a deep sea scientist? Then <laughs> it's a lot of um, Bob Ballard's books are good if you want to, if you're interested in ocean exploration and science related to that. 20,000 leagues under the sea. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new book called The Brilliant Abyss that came out last year um, about one marine scientist's journey Ooh. Um, studying <coughs> uh, bone eating uh, wha whale worms uh, not, oh. that's not what they're called <laughs> they eat the bones of whales yeah I've seen them <laughs> um, there's a lot of other interesting things in there too but that was one mm. aspect of the book that was kind of unique um, you know, books also by Sylvia Earle uh, yeah, absolutely. are another inspiring <coughs> literature to look at. Um, I'm a big fan of movies as a way to get inspired, so I'm, Life Aquatic is one that I have an affinity for. Mm. And Girls. then, if you want the originals, right? Uh, Jacques Cousteau's right. <laughs> documentaries. And some of the recent BBC Planet uh, documentaries have also mm -hmm. been inspiring for thinking about marine science careers and marine science topics. Yep, Blue Planet, all about the seas. Yeah. Or all about water. Maybe they have a freshwater episode. I'm not sure. Um, a book that I think is really interdisciplinary is called The Blue Mind by marine biologist Wallace J. Nichols. Um, it gives a really interesting look into um, sort of the intersection of marine science and how humans think about water and how we feel about water and how that has led a lot of people to study marine science. So it's a different approach if you are just interested in that but um it's one of my one of my go-to's what was the name of that one again it's called the blue mind by wallace j nichols blue mind Ooh. and then if imagery is something that inspires you there's a book called the deep it came out maybe 10 15 20 years ago i'm not exactly sure but it's just some amazing photography of deep sea Ooh. animals um, we've got a copy here on the ship um, yeah Oh, is it in the lounge? Is that in the lounge? It is, oh. yeah. The Deep. I I'm, don't remember the name of the um, authors. I think they're from France. Mm. Wow, my to-read list and book list just grew by. <laughs> 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 I was jotting all those down. Thanks, you guys. I'll throw it in there because it's... Uh, Little, little different, but I tell everybody about it. I read the Book of Eels about a year ago, and it's, uh, I think it was like a New York Times bestseller or something. It's kind of written like a memoir, um, and then yeah. every other chapter is a little bit more uh, scientific and focuses on everything from the history to the science of eels, what we do know, what we don't know and follows their journey from the Sargasso Sea to um, up basically all the way up in Scandinavia and then back to the Sargasso Sea uh, down in the like 
kind of off the coast of Florida, far, far east of Florida. Bridge so eels have? migrate? Yeah, they do. Address. And and they like take four or five different forms of almost differently classified eels. Can we do another huh. step five zero meters north? Thank you. Look at that arc. Nice. Oh. Artsy. <laughs> Thank you. That is, yeah, that is something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One thing I didn't know about eels that I learned in the book was that Sigmund Freud actually studied them before he ever studied any human subjects, and it inspired a lot of his psychology. Oh, whoa. there's There's so many crazy connections that eels have to the world. I just like it because it takes one specific species, and then you see how it's tied into art, into history, into other discoveries that are totally different sciences. Um, other theories, right or wrong. It's really interesting. And I think it's the only marine science book I've ever read that's like made me cry. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I have to read it now. Yeah. <laughs> A gripping story. Oh my goodness, about eels, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew they were so deep? One more time, what's yeah. it called? The Book of Eels. Okay. <laughs> Straight to the point. What's this book about eels called? <laughs> Another one that came out recently along those same lines is this, I think it's called The Soul of an Octopus. Oh, Ooh, which, I need to read that. Yeah, um, is another one that has uh, some heart-gripping moments. Um, and shout out to the New England Aquarium, which is uh, featured heavily in that book. Got it, Soul of Octopus. And if you haven't book. Watched, if you haven't watched the My Octopus Teacher, it's a great movie. It's a yeah, great documentary. Uh, I believe it was on Netflix. Still might be. Oh, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when I have to leave my dog at home for an hour or two, I'll put on like Blue Planet or um, various. <laughs> <laughs> I do that to dogs. my cat. <laughs> I'll sit and watch the fish. <laughs> well, you're all animals. Maybe you're communicating on some level. I don't know. Maybe you're having like eel conversations when I'm gone. <laughs> Octopus dog <laughs> comms. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, slightly different tangent, but maybe more oriented for children. Another fun, uh, inspiring. Um, piece of media is the Octonauts, which is a cartoon that features many different um, ocean environments and ocean engineers and ocean scientists, um, ocean explorers in cartoon form. And many of them are animals. It makes me think of your octopus dog communication. <laughs> <laughs> which makes me think of Spongebob. <laughs> you know, there's so much about science we don't understand. We don't know that dogs and octopi are octopuses are not having conversations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you're talking kids' books, how about one that's very relevant to deep sea exploration? It's called Ropos on the Underwater Volcano. Oh, who wrote Ooh. that? It's a picture book by, I just looked it up. It is by uh, Dana Manalang. Hopefully I'm not butchering the name too badly. Didn't Jess make a children's book with her sister or something? Maybe, yeah. I don't know. Is it published? Like a, I don't know if it's published. we got to ask her about that. Jess, uh, one of the ROV pilots. What did you say it was called, Trevor? Ropos? Ropos and, what? and the Underwater Volcano. That okay. sounds so good. It's a picture book. It's for small children, and it's, it's really well done. And Aww. for those that don't know, Ropos is uh, another ROV oh, um, okay. that it commonly works in Canadian waters. Oh, that's cute. Well, if we're shouting out children's books, I have got to shout out um, a great children's book uh, called Jada's Journey Under, Under the Sea. It's written by Dr. Jeanette Davis, who is a marine microbiologist. Um, and it's a great book that shows um, diversity in ocean science and marine science and also uh, just introduces some sort of 
beginner terms for students. Um, that's the first book. Uh, the second book, I think, is Science is Everywhere. So uh, beautiful pictures and uh, great storyline in that, both of those. And if you're interested about things written from the someone on the Nautilus, um, one of the ROV pilots just published a book of poems on the Nautilus website. Oh, oh. Called that's awesome. Deep Sea Oddities. Love it. Are there illustrations with it? Yes, by her sister. Jess and yeah, Jess and Melissa. Sweet. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't realize that was her sister. I believe so. They do have the same last name, so that would make sense. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's interested in microbiology, there's a great book called I Contain Multitudes by Ed Young. Um, and that's all, some of it is marine microbiology, some of it's like human microbiology, and each chapter is a new story. Uh, and it's written, written really, really well. It's called I Contain Multitudes, you said? Yep. I'm really glad you said that because I think I was trying to think of that phrase the other night at dinner and it came out as a person is many people. <laughs> 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 we all just kind of nodded. <laughs> So do you know that expression from the book, or is it a, a more widely used expression? I think it's more widely used, but I don't know who first used it. It was a poet. Right? Walt Whitman. Oh, God, that's embarrassing. <laughs> hey, you found the right info. I, I <laughs> you said Poorly <laughs> paraphrased. <laughs> person is many people. A person is many people. <laughs> so we're getting into a flatter part here, which matches what we're seeing in high pack. Bridge nav. Can we have another step five zero meters north? Thank you. Coming back to the books that inspire marine science, like everything we've talked about, none of those things are what <laughs> I actually looked at or read when I was little. Um, I think my motivation for this was watching documentaries on the Titanic being discovered, and mm. a lot of Jaws. <laughs> nice. Anyone want another 3D pineapple? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yes. It's almost breakfast time. I'm good, thank you. One of the things I love about these expeditions is um, I work with so many fascinating human beings. And you guys just gave me like 15 new books to read <laughs> and um, lots of new perspective. And uh, yeah, I got to go do some homework, I guess, right now. <laughs> Trevor, someone's uh, asking, can you repeat the children's book, I think, that you mentioned? Ropos and the Underwater Volcano, R-O-P-O-S. Thank you very much. Ashton, um, Asako is saying that they joined a Japanese eel spawning area searching cruise. Oh my gosh. That sounds so cool. That is so cool. Apparently nobody knows where, I could be saying this wrong, Anguilla, Anguilla, it's like the European eel. Nobody has ever actually seen it reproduce. Mm. So Yeah, there's a lot about eel spawning that's not well known. It's crazy. Also, isn't it just fun to say the word eel? <laughs> eel. 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 
Like just the way it feels in your mouth. The way it feels in your eels. mouth. <laughs> <laughs> <Like> eels. 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 <laughs> Clever. You know how sometimes a state issues a lot of license plates um, that all start with the same three letters? And so you see those three letters everywhere. At some point in Louisiana, they issued emu and eel around the same time. So there are all these license plates <laughs> in the city or in New Orleans driving around. They're like eel or emu. And I feel like we should make teams and have a coalition. <laughs> are you saying you have one of those? I don't. I really, I actually still have my Texas plates, but I would really like to get some eel plates. It's such a lottery, though. I don't want to end up as emu. Can you get a, like a vanity plate, like a custom? I do not. But is that an option? Oh, it could be. You could get a vanity plate that looks like one of the normal plates, but just be guaranteed it says eel at the front yeah, of it. Yeah. Eel 452. Like the most sly vanity plate ever. Or you could get emu eel. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I could, and then get one of those like license plate borders that says something like the ultimate battle. The ultimate <laughs> My other car is an emu. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just weird, Trevor. That's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> Proud parent of eels. <laughs> Eel LVR. Eel yes. lover. Eel lover. <laughs> now, does this change? Is this affected whether you eat eel or not? I don't Your love for eels. Yeah, I don't know. I feel, <laughs> I feel like this is very borderline, and it's going to start affecting my personal relationships. <laughs> if I have eel lover relation, <laughs> eel lover license plates, that's like. But do you eat eels? Next level. <laughs> I do, but I feel bad about it. <laughs> <laughs> Same with octopus. I, I stopped eating uh, I've cephalopods. Yeah. yeah. I feel really bad about those. <clears throat> I could never eat octopus. It just, I, I, I can't, I don't know. Trevor, what time did you say we need to come off bottom? I'm thinking 6.30. Okay. So we got about 20 more minutes to this dive on the bottom. What is that thing? Whoa. Shrimp. Really? Shrimp. <laughs> Squirrel. In unison? Shrimp. <laughs> I swear it looked different than all the other <laughs> shrimp we've seen. <laughs> Beth, somebody is wondering what your favorite volcano is. Um, and it can be active or inactive. Uh, <laughs> this is something I have never thought to rank. Um, I might go with Mauna Loa, just mm -hmm. because it's the only volcano that I've actually been on and seen lava from Ooh. with my own eyes. And also because when I went there and went to Volcanoes National Park, um, uh, I had the best coffee of my life mm. in the parking lot of that. What? It was, yeah, some super friendly guy with a little coffee hut attached to his bicycle. It was, it was amazing. Oh, like, uh, that sounds I like a once in a lifetime. I still think about that coffee <laughs> and enjoying coffee it nice. while I was walking on, um, walking out to the ocean on lava. Oh, wow. What is that Can yellow there center reset? screen? Yep. It looks like a Probably Bexard. Last one for the day. Yeah, I guess I wanted to have a closer peep, but it was a non-way of asking that. OK. 
Okay. Looks like there might be a fish at the top of the screen in the far distance. Let's chase him. <laughs> <laughs> How many points is this? I haven't been eaten once. I wasn't on SPL. The ultimate fish game. <laughs> Another halosaur? You haven't been eaten once. Zoom in, please. I can't quite see if that's what it is. Yes, another halosaur. It's moonwalking. I yeah. know. <laughs> or as I like to call it, not an eel. Is it not an eel? <laughs> Is it an eel? <laughs> there, I feel like it falls under eel-like fish. It could be. Yeah. Uh, it's not in here. It's just H-A-L-O. Bridge nav. Halosaur. S-A-U-R. Yep. Can we have another step five zero meters north? Thank you. Yeah, so we're just passing over some small Swiftia. He's more kind of reddish, brown, orange. I think these little Swiftia. There's a Victorgia here on the left. I remember Victor Gorgi, Victor Gorgia, because it's got a V and so is a violet. Oh, oh good. Ooh, that's good. Wow. That's good. That's good connection. That's nice. I wonder if it was named by someone named Victor. Usually, you don't name things after yourself, but someone might name it after you. That's mm. uh, oh. generally taxonomic mm. naming rules. So I noticed the other day there was something that was Kelly I. Was that mm -hmm. named after Chris Kelly? It was, in fact. What? Oh, cool. That's cool. Was it a coral? Memory yes, is I believe it's a Chrysogorgia. Yes. It's type of goat. Still <laughs> <laughs> oh, it. Okay. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> no more questions. <laughs> <laughs> So what about that octopus, Trevor? <laughs> <laughs> I work on it. Yeah, it's somewhere in our common animals list, wherever it is. How many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? How many pickles? How many tickles does <laughs> tickles. it take to make an octopus laugh? I know this one. I won't spoil it. Ten. Uh, <laughs> tentacles. Tentacles. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, person out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Asako has a primnoid. That's so cool. As well. Yeah. How many pickles? <laughs> <laughs> Ten pickles. Ten pickles, yeah. <laughs> I'll be like, what? <laughs> I don't get the joke. <laughs> She's like, how That's does that relate? Funny. How does that relate? Because Horny was in here. Um, when can we join you guys again after this? Uh, well, um, I believe we just mentioned that we'll be starting to come off bottom around 6.30 Hawaii time. And then uh, the plan is to go back in around 4 um, Hawaii time. So, Yeah, and then we probably would be on bottom around 6 p.m. Hawaii time. So about 12 hours from now. Mm -hmm. Wire puffer fifth pipe. Excuse me. Why are <laughs> puffer fish so expensive? Why are puffer fish so expensive? So expensive. Are they expensive? <laughs> okay. Because of inflation. Oh, okay. oh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Trying it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's too close to home, though. It's a little ex <laughs> <laughs> My almond milk is very expensive yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> Can't really.
to get groceries the way I used to. <laughs> I know you were joking about the price of real estate on these rocks a couple days ago. I, yeah. <laughs> no one's laughing, Shelby. It's I, too real. It's too real. <laughs> it's too real. Look at this high density housing. Oh. 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 <laughs> what? So Shelby, unrelated, no, no, um, you know, total non sequitur. Are you able to mute other people? <laughs> I do not have that power. I do not have that power. I can do that. <laughs> you just dropped that pufferfish joke. I don't. <laughs> Are you trust telling me to mute, mute myself? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll stop. I like the jokes. Yes, you can ask questions if you have one. There's one now. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Runaway auto heading. Do we have any more zoom zoom? What? Mm. <laughs> <On the cameras? laughs> Do you want uh, her to zoom in? I just want to take a peek at that yellow. Yeah, sure, stand by. <laughs> Is that bad? Is that wrong? That's, that's great. That's encouraged. <laughs> any coins in the bank? I'm just curious. Yeah, I gotta, gotta take a peeky peek. Go we ahead. Always have, we always have zoom. Always have zoom. Just Wait. waiting for someone to get inspired to zoom on something. Ooh, what's that thing behind it? The white thing? A sponge. Oh. Yeah. So the behind it, is that that plexura that we've been Come seeing? Come Steve. Yeah, it looks like there's two different over. ones here. Yeah. Yellow one and a brown one. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Was that a pair of gorgia? Can't tell. That little one that was to the right? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. Glamour shot of Hercules. Mm -hmm. You're doing great with these beauty shots. Thank you. Such Highlight. dramatic lighting. <laughs> it is. Steve zooms and balances lighting. I just kind of float here. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'm kind of hanging here. Yeah. I'm kind of sinking here. Yeah. Do do do. Ashton, are you constantly like zoom in, please? Swimming upwards. I am held by the winch, so I'm actually kind of sinking downwards. I'm kind of like an anchor. Like dangling okay. is the term. Da <laughs> dangling. Okay. That is not the scientific term. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm dangling. Um, Trevor, can I'm you uh, wide. pull wide and pan to the left, left. on that pink primnoid? Uh, leggy up to the left? Yes. Yeah. I think this might be Caligorgia. Okay, zoom in, please. Ah. Oh, these are pretty. That's different. Nice. The stars the same color as they're like blending. <laughs> so pretty. Yeah, we're getting confirmation that oh, this I'm is Caligorgia. Okay, thank you. You can Thanks. come wide. Oopsies. Are those all brittle stars as well? There was also a crinoid attached, but yes, I saw most that. of those were cool. brittle stars. Cool. That's just an interesting little pocket there. Yeah, Annabelle, to answer your question, so I control my altitude with the winch control. Okay. Bridge and nav. I think we can hold position there. Can we hold position here, please? Thanks. By the time we finish swinging, it'll be time to come off, so. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then on Atalanta, the thrusters kind of control the heading. Mm. And uh, Hercules can then move in like, what, a 30 meter radius on the tether around Atalanta. Keep going with the ROV talk. Someone's wondering. Um, so, 
Hercules and Atalanta are uh, behind the ship, not in front. If you are looking at the quad view in satellite V3, you'll see the high pack, which is this sort of uh, map sort of view. Um, you'll see these red and blue lines. Those are the ROVs, so they tow behind uh, the ship, not in front. And then another question, which is probably more for the front Star. row. Um, they're wondering how do you prevent the tether from getting caught in the ship's propeller? Zoom in on this, please. Talk about oh. that in just a sec. This is like our eight pointy guy that we you oh. guys found the other day, right? Maybe. Is a nine pointy guy. One, two, three, what? four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. <coughs> Neat. Are we gonna get him? <laughs> 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 Leave him alone, him. Ashton. <laughs> what did he ever do to you? Why do we want, okay, but real question, why do we want the eight pointy guy, but why don't we want the nine pointy guy? <laughs> I can snip a leg if you want. <laughs> All right, Poke him. Bouncy, thanks. No, but I don't know. are they separate? Are they like, I don't know. Were we actively seeking out eight so, pointy guy? No, so we are only taking biological samples um, if they are on the particular species list, something that we haven't seen, something that we need some more ID on. So we're not just taking, uh, it's not Fish. random, let's put it that way. Yeah. It's, it's a very uh, specific request from some of our scientists ashore. So do we think so. those two are probably not related? Thank you for explaining, Diane. Yeah, I don't know if I, I did a great job on that, but... Um, They're probably related, um, but maybe, um, you know, same genera, different species. Okay. One we know more about than the other. What does genera refer to? Um, so in taxonomic... Uh, hierarchy in the tree of life. Mm -hmm. You start um, the most narrow definition is a species. You can have multiple species in the same genera. Then you can have m multiple genera in the same family. <laughs> uh, no, sorry. Multiple species in the same genera. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I have trouble going in the reverse order. <laughs> Hold on. You can go the other way. And then it goes to Family. Start a kingdom. Family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> family, then order, then class. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Yeah. Uh, Gina, genus. Gina. Okay. Yeah. Genera, genera is plural. Genera. Ah. Genera. Genera. Genera is a plural of genus? Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had your back, Beth. Okay. <laughs> That's why I don't think I've ever heard that word before. Now, is, is subspecies an official? Classification. Oh yeah, term? then yeah, you can have like subclasses, <laughs> then you get right, subclass. subspecies. <laughs> yeah, it gets really complicated. Okay. We this is like a artificial <laughs> uh, way of grouping things, um, so right. it, it's not always su super straightforward. When you say it's artificial, you mean what do you mean? Um, it's a human-derived categorization system. It's right. not necessarily like. Yeah, evolution is complicated. <laughs> it's, so not it's not always representative. Yeah, of doesn't anything. always yeah. group as easily as we think. But when we do genetic testing and we learn things, do we reorder them within genera, yes. class, king? Okay. Yes. So, for instance, within the various coral groups, there are, like, sometimes we don't know what to call something because the name is changing because as more specimens are collected or genomic analyses are done, then it either confirms or confuses um, what we think we know about their classification. See star. And then when you get to the realm of microbes, all bets are off. <laughs> like <laughs> trying to apply the same concepts <laughs> to microscopic life, like bacteria and archaea, which their genomes evolve in very different ways because they are not evolving through sexual reproduction. Um, like how to define a microbial species is very, very difficult. Don't forget about your cable and the propeller question. Oh, yes. right. 
Uh, oh, thanks, Ashton. <laughs> let's start simplest. The propeller on the ship has a big circle around it to prevent anything from getting stuck in there. That's more of a generic, don't get fishing gear caught in the propeller, too. <laughs> uh, tether, well, okay, let's start with the 6.8. The 6.8 goes straight down out of the A-frame. That's the big blue arch on the back of the ship. All the way straight down to Atalanta. There's no loopy to get caught up in the in the propeller. So that's how we solve that one. And then finally, the tether. Well, when we bring Hercules up to the surface, it's always far after the ship. Stand by. <coughs> Roger. We've also got the uh, ROV nav screen up on channel three, so it, it kind of highlights how the ROVs are typically positioned off the stern of the ship, right? Yeah, when we're deep, it doesn't really matter. We'll go any which way. Oh, but yeah? coming up shallow, we keep after the ship, and we never come above 50 meters unless the vehicles are in a happy orientation. Oh. All right, I think we're going to come off bottom now. Ship's having a little bit of... Uh, trouble holding heading, so we're gonna yep, take this fine. opportunity to come off bottom. Okay, okay, we're all done. No more samples on the way up. Great, thanks. All right, we can get up set up for recovery heading there. Yeah, you want me to orient 180 from you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the auto heading. Um, when I try to cross your heading, that's when it was kind of going wild and wild. I was probably to pulling a. Oh, you think so? Yeah, the ship started moving and I was moving the other way, so. I gotcha. Okay. Back Do you have the garbage over there? Oh, yeah. The propeller thing. I don't think our propeller is actually moving when we're diving. Also is that true. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Someone just said, "Isn't the propeller off during most dives?" Is that? It is. is yeah. That yeah. Yeah. During all dives, we have the jet pump and the bow thruster. Bow thruster is a is a little. I think it's a propeller, but it's inside the hull up at the bow, and the jet pump is completely different. I don't even know what it looks like, but it's not a propeller. <laughs> Are you coming up? I'm above you. Yep, I am now. Okay. All right, what am I making right now? Making 20. Making 20. All right. You can switch my solution, whatever yep. that thing's called over. Look at all this nonsense. Half of it's mine. Steve, can we get the uh, future winch up on the top left screen, please? We're coming Thank up from you. the bottom now, about 1.5 hours to the surface. Thank you. Thank you, that helps. Future wench. Okay, I feel like I'm always still not completely clear on like what things we are looking for when the um, thing is like spooling. Like, like what are the things that you want to see versus you don't want to see? On the winch? Yes. Well, we want to see the cable go onto the drum, uh -huh. and we don't want to see it crossed over itself oh, where okay. it's not supposed to be. 
So it's totally fine to wrap over top of the previous layer, uh -huh. which is pretty much the main design of a winch. But we don't want to see it wrap over itself on the same layer. Mm. Another thing that can be bad is there can be gaps between the cables on a given layer, mm. and the cable can fall into that gap on the uh, subsequent layer, which is fine. But if it falls down two layers, then there's a possibility that that something above it will fall on top of it, and then mm. it doesn't unspool right, and it's all kinds of trouble. Ah. It is, but it's just sloppy. And you can kill your auto heading too. Ashton, maybe do you want to try some different lighting setups in the blue water? Yeah. See if that gives us a little, because I'm wide open. Yeah, let's try. I only have one light on. How are they doing? It seems like they're doing okay. Look at that blue arrow, it's all the way back there now. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that this heading seems to be holding reasonably <laughs> well with the way it's Doesn't coming. Because the current arrow wasn't coming from there what, 10 minutes ago, was yeah, it? Yeah, they were pretty aligned um, yeah, initially. Roger. Current arrow. You see it on this view above, Lynette. Oh, OK. Good to know. I can't remember the difference between the blue arrow on the right and the blue diamond ball thing at the right by the bow. This thing? That thing versus the one just up to the right. I do not know what that is. Yeah. Steven, what okay. did you want to play with? Um, stand by. Okay. I was just thinking uh, some of the lights on Atalanta to see if we could get some more light in our shot. Oh yeah, I've got lots of lights. Yeah, even that's. Sometimes better. that one it, washes yeah, it, it out. That but now that we're coming up, that direction. I now think it's up. better than being dark, right? This sounds great. Oh, I yeah, yeah. Good this point. is all lights on. Cool. That's fine this? for me. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Because yeah, otherwise we can't see anything because it's too dark. I do not. Yeah. Know. We can get that marine snow Star Wars effect. Yeah. Maybe can you tilt? Uh, yes. Down. Down. Yeah. Do, do, do. I think we usually come up and down with uh, Atlanta tilted quite far down, or straight down, or whatever makes the light look nice. Okay. Yeah, that's looking better. Oh, that that's is. Good there. Thanks. Thank you. Now we'll have a chance of seeing something if it comes by. Cool. Thanks, Stephen. Yep. So there's something with this auto iris switch on here where I think when you press it, it like it reads it and it gives it a certain gain. Oh. And then you're kind of stuck on that gain. Oh, with weird. Your, okay. And then if you hit huh. it again, it like might reassess and give you a higher or lower gain. Weird. Yeah. Okay. There's no manual gain on that, is there? No. Not with that controller, anyway. I wonder if you could do it with the soft, the other software. Have you played with it that at all? It seems like there should no, but it seems like there should be a way to control it. 
because it just picks a gain for you. Yeah, and when you go to weird. manual iris, then you don't have any gain control. So, yeah, it's odd. Ooh, we have some more trivia. <laughs> How hard are these? Hold on. Did you say you had some trivia questions? Yeah, Shelby? sorry, I started reading another question. Uh, oh. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, the Pacific Ocean is home to most of the world's islands. About how many islands are there? Oh, gosh. Ooh, great <laughs> question. Oh, I got to change the screen. We can cheat over here. <laughs> no cheating. <laughs> no cheating. Oh, <laughs> so tempting. <laughs> I can't answer say. that one I saw. You saw the answer? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ashton. Uh. <laughs> she was preset up for cheat mode. <laughs> so many little islands. No I self control know. with I'm trivia questions and chocolate. 4,500. I'm going to say uh, 470,000. That's like a huge. <laughs> <laughs> 10,000. What is the magnitude of It is more than 15,000, but less than 40,000. Really? Apparently. Wow. I'm I going it was way on more this than that. answer <laughs> that I'm given. <laughs> Less than 40,000? That blows me away. Yes. Um, answer was or is, I guess, uh, 25,000 islands in the Pacific, including Hawaii. That sounds way too so, low. <laughs> That's that honestly makes me feel so much better <laughs> because we haven't seen land in like two weeks. <laughs> and I keep thinking, like, where would our remote island be <laughs> if we needed one? <laughs> so, okay, what are they defining as an island? Like, are all, all the islands on coastal British Columbia counted in that? I don't know. Or just know. remote Pacific ones? Because there's a lot of islands. Um, this is what's popping up from a couple of sites. 25 says Wikipedia. 25 says some other places. That's what's coming up on the okay. all-seeing Google. The all-seeing <laughs> Google. <laughs> um, uh, what is the most remote spot of any of any of the world's oceans, or maybe that's in any of the world's oceans? I don't know. I'm just gonna tell you guys. Um, so apparently, it's a place called Point Nemo which is the most remote spot in any of the world's oceans located in the South Pacific. Mm -hmm. uh, according to NOAA, it's about 1,670 miles from land. Wow. I feel like I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> At least pass by it for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely driven through there. I don't remember <laughs> if I ate or like stopped. <laughs> <laughs> No, more of a ship power question. How is power transferred through the ship to different utility functions like the winch or the deck cranes, the A-frame? Is there a central hydraulic power unit? Good question. Yeah. Oh, it's electrical. There's, uh, I can think, wow, what is that? <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> we're back. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> I can think of one, two, three, four, five, six hydraulic power units. But the short answer is everything's transmitted electrically. Yeah, there's big generators in the engine room and that powers everything else electrically. Cool.
six, seven, seven HPUs. What's happening in the 60 hertz closet? It converts from 480 volts three phase AC up to 2600 volts three phase AC. So it can be sent down the 68 cable. Cool. Ben, yeah, someone was wondering about the O2 concentration. Are we going through the oxygen minimum zone or said it was dropping? Yep, so as we rise in depth, we are going to see a period of lower oxygen concentrations, and then it'll pick back up as we get closer to the surface. Good eye. What causes the variation in oxygen levels? Uh, so oxygen is created near the surface of the ocean where sunlight penetrates the water and you have photosynthetic organisms that um, create oxygen as a byproduct of photosynthesis. That dissolved oxygen um, uh, you know, diffuses into the water. Also in the sunlit ocean, you have all that photosynthetic matter, primary production, um, all kinds of phytoplankton and zooplankton and everything else. And those things eventually die and start sinking through the water column, uh, or maybe they're transported as fecal pellets, um, et cetera. But um, as that material moves through the water column, um, uh, or you also have zooplankton in the water column uh, lower down consuming some stuff and as they're consuming things they're respiring and so they're using up oxygen um, you can also have heterotrophic bacteria and other things that are also respiring using up oxygen and so that creates an oxygen minimum zone um, and then the oxygen concentration in deeper depths is usually related to deep water masses and so it depends on the oxygen concentration that was in the water when that water began sinking to form midwater and deep water um, water masses generally has a higher oxygen concentration. Okay, awesome, thank you. And so the more primary production you have in the upper ocean usually leads to stronger O2, yeah. oxygen minimum zones, uh, less oxygen. And in places where those oxygen minimum zones intersect with the seafloor, for instance, on a continental shelf or on a seamount, then that can affect the benthic organisms that need oxygen. Cool. Change the status here. Just forgot about that. <clears throat> Di Diane, do you have a playlist you listen to just when you go to Antarctica? I think they're having a quick conversation, <gasps> Ashton. Dang. Very intense. <laughs> I know she does. <laughs> If she spends like two months there at a time, I, I'm thinking it's going to be more than one playlist. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah. What a library. These four songs on repeat. 
I don't know. I'm one of those people. Are you? Oh, yeah. I'm like four songs for the next two months. Wow. We're going to know every incredible. word. <laughs> I'm the stark opposite of that. <laughs> I've been trying to listen to about three new albums a day every day out here. Oh, my oh. gosh. That's insane. While wow. you're doing other things or like just... Just yeah. sitting and listening. No, well, I'm doing other things. Okay. I downloaded three albums for the whole time out here. Wow. Yeah. It's it's nice because at the end of the year when they do that, like, Spotify, most oh, listened to yeah. songs thing. <laughs> Spotify for me is just like, you listen to four songs. Can you uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me suggest something new? <laughs> I, I don't, like, watch, I don't repeat watch movies, but I yeah. definitely repeat albums and music. A Same. Lot. I also don't repeat watch movies. Oh, I repeat yeah. watch movies and shows like no, mm -mm. so especially much. TV like a TV <laughs> series. I will never. No. Sometimes, Life's you too know, short. but you know what? I'm always amazed at how many details I've missed okay. when I rewatch. Okay. So you never know. True. True. Like. Sometimes I had to rewatch like Game of Thrones episodes. You know how long those are. Ooh. Everything that's going on, I'll rewatch and be like, when did that happen? And I just completely missed like. A line or a character or a Can plot you be ready change. Here? Yeah. <laughs> we don't have to slow down. You just have to be ready. Okay. I'm on it. Future winch won't do us wrong. <laughs> So with our starboard ship camera on channel three, you can see the sun is just starting to brighten the skies. Oh. Seeing that green flash last night at sunset was really cool. No way. Now there I don't no even know. Flash. I feel like I just burn oh. my retinas now. <laughs> I mean, it was a, yeah, I wouldn't call it a flash. I thought it was a flash. Hey, maybe, you know. It was a spark. <laughs> I'd call it a green spark. Okay. Green red nose. That yeah. was just some <laughs> welding. Because I definitely <laughs> saw green circles for like 30 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like eye damage. That sounds like, yeah, that sounds like eye damage. <laughs> I but used to it went away, though. the sun a lot as a kid, actually. <laughs> I did, too. I did, too. <laughs> yeah. During uh, soccer. Oh, man. I was on uh, defense. The ball was up the other end of the field. I would just look up at the sun, look down, look up at the sun. I don't know. Someday it might come to haunt me, but uh, my eyes are good still. But don't stare at the sun. I definitely have a little bit of loss in the middle of my eyes from that. Oh, yeah. My parents told me as a kid, like, don't look at the sun. You'll go blind. Okay, cool. You know, responsible parenting. Sure, whatever. And then I looked by accident one day. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to be blind instantly. <laughs> and then I could still see. So then I doubted everything. I'm like, oh, clearly they were lying to me. <laughs> I'll just look at the sun all the time now. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't the right result. Oh, right there. We got to stop. I saw that. Oh, we got to stop. stop. Yeah, pay out. Okay. Good catch. Dang it. Went. Oof. Oh, oh, okay, that I see. Thing right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, now come in nice and slow. Okay. Nice and slow. Ooh. Ooh. Let me to back up. Keep going in just okay. a little bit. See if it falls in there. That's better. Yeah, that's what we want. Yeesh. I mean, slightly we want. It's kind of, kind of what we want. Let's do a full wrap and see what it looks like. Horrible. Yep. <laughs> <coughs> what did you just point at? I was pointing at the the winch store camera. Oh. Yeah, the too bad part about that one is it's hard to see either end. You know, uh. you can see the middle really well, but it's really hard to see the ends. Should we just reposition it? Maybe, yeah. 
We don't really care about the aft end of the flange, pan, or aft flange. Pan right of it? Yeah, maybe. Or slide right. Re like, move the thing. Yep. You want this me to keep, good. keep pulling in? Yep. I should catch pulling. up on my delta, though. Okay. <clears throat> so on the way up, I set the pace, and on the way down, you set the pace? Opposite. Is that opposite? On the way up, you set it, because your thrusters can only do so much. Mm -hmm. And on the way down, we are limited by the max payout speed of the winch. That makes sense. Which is 30. Isn't it harder for you to f to go down, though, because you're positively buoyant? No, because of the thruster position. Oh, OK. I'll talk about that more in a sec here. That sounds good. All right, where's that spot? Should be coming up right about now. Lynette, are you on SPL? Yes, I am. Do you know how much um, of the seafloor we've mapped so far on this expedition? Oh, on this expedition. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> no, no pressure if you don't know. Just random um, questions somebody's wondering. How much the entire seafloor? <laughs> <laughs> how much? How how much area have we? Oh mapped? man, I do not know. No worries. How wide is our our swath? Swath typically. Um, I guess it depends on the depth, right? Yeah, it depends on the depth. Um, but I would say around 6,000 meters, usually. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. six kilometers? I was looking to see if we had it reported in our sit reps, but it doesn't look like we do, mm. which I thought we did okay. on Let's the keep last one. Up. But okay, so back at 20. Yep. transited like thousand how many hundreds of miles would you estimate who knows I have no idea <laughs> we've been out here for a while <laughs> <laughs> how many hours of mapping have we done times approximately 12 knots 10 knots in this case say 10 knots for easy math yeah we'll have to get back to we'll have to get back to that question Uh, Ashton, question for you and Trevor. Someone's wondering what is the deepest you have ever been since being a pilot for an RV? Well, what's uh, the deepest you've been <laughs> on this expedition? I was like, well, for Ashton, <laughs> that would be. Well, no, they asked how deep we've been. Oh, I've deep? only been 30 meters. Oh. Scuba diving. Oh, yeah. personally. Yeah. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe less. But is that the advanced scuba? I think, what's the standard? Is it like 60 feet? 100 feet. Oh, oh. yeah, advanced is 100 feet. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, no, they meant as pilots for the ROVs. <laughs> I know. I'm just, being, <laughs> I'm just being a pain in the butt. Trevor, Trevor you, said, you said you took Hercules to 3,920 20, yeah. I think something yeah. Something like that. 950 maybe, yeah. We didn't go to 4,000 or even 39. Was that the 90. deepest you've been with any ROV? Yes. Yes. Yeah, and for me, it's been on this trip. How deep have we gone? 3,000? I don't think we've crossed no, 3K. Yeah, not yet. I think 25 <gasps> or 26. Are we going to cross 3K? I feel like I have a goal now. I think we have yes. a seamount that we're planning to go, yeah. Okay. Nootka seamount, I believe, or Argonaut, one of those. I think it's Nootka. I was reading the... And that's meters, the by the way, everybody. Right. <laughs> not fathoms. Not fathoms. <laughs> Or cables. Or cables.
What were you asking me about thrusters? Oh, yeah. So I was asking about who the limiting factor is going down and who the limiting factor is going up. So Yeah, her can go down a lot faster because the thrusters, the vertical thrusters, yeah. they push the water, obviously, the opposite way the hurt goes. And okay. when it's going down, there's free rain for the water to just escape. But when ah. Herc's going up, it pushes them right into the starboard bio box or the Niskan fence. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I also just want to thank everybody who is just putting in positive comments and thanking um, everyone in the control van just for all of the learning experience and the witty banter. We appreciate you guys for listening in, and we really hope that you do enjoy these dives and you do learn a lot. Uh, we also learn a lot. So we're really grateful to have you guys tune in with us. I forgot, I think I saw earlier that somebody was like, do you all play uh, cribbage? Is that the game that the tournament is happening for? <laughs> That's right, yeah. I was like, do they? <laughs> 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 yeah, they do. <laughs> is that tournament today? I have no idea. I no, don't even know how to play this game. Okay, good. Yeah. So we have some time to like practice. <laughs> we can do practice rounds up? that don't count. I would. I would if I could practice. I've played one round of cribbage ever, and I have Steven on my night. team. Oh, well, I guess I'm not But I haven't up. done anything with it, so like you can just <laughs> sign up. Okay, what is the objective? I literally have never heard of this game until I got on the ship. What's the objective? It's a card game, right? It's a card game. You just want more points, really. Oh. And there's a lot of complicated ways to get points. Oh. That's kind of the summary of the game. <laughs> it's like cards with math. I'm not entirely sold. <laughs> a lot of mental public math. I prefer private calculated <laughs> math. <laughs> but I do like cards. I feel like the only card games I really ever played growing up was like Goldfish or I Declare War and stuff like that. <laughs> Did you say goldfish? Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> Did you call it goldfish growing yeah. up? Yeah. Cool. Not, not never heard oh, that. is that not? Go, go fish? Oh. <laughs> no, we well we all we all said goldfish. Amazing. Like everybody. That's cute. That's, That's like everybody <laughs> said goldfish. That's cool. Like That's straight cute. up goldfish. I literally goldfish. this whole time thought it was called goldfish until this very day. <laughs> 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 Till this very day. Everybody I've ever known we say goldfish. <laughs> Shelby, if it makes you feel better. I've I've been on ships before. I know like a lot of the terminology. I should have it in my head, the jargon, all of that. And up until yesterday, I've been calling the crane hold, the crane hole. <laughs> 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 
And after like a week and a half of me doing this, Trevor called me out, so. <laughs> <laughs> it was a D in the end, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but crane hole is so much more, I don't know, <laughs> blunt sounding. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you're going through a hole in the deck. I, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I thought that's why you were calling it that. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I think everyone thought it was a joke. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone thought it was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. I'm just a joke to you all. <laughs> the crane cave. <laughs> I like that. Aww. Aww. <laughs> what are we yelling at? Says happy birthday on the uh, oh. manipulator. <laughs> For Dan. So sweet. Apparently, it took him about eight seconds to see that yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> Did he see it uh, on deck or when he was in the van? In the van. Yeah. Or if he did see it on deck, he didn't let on. He looked pretty surprised. I saw him on channel three showing off his necklace. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good sport. Mm -hmm. We have a little ROV team group chat and he was a lot of appreciation on that last night. So it was a really yeah. good birthday. Oh, that's great. Someone's wondering what's the max speed the ROVs can have in any direction. Two knots straight ahead. Mm. What about up and down for Herc? Uh, 20 meters a minute up <laughs> and I don't know how fast we can go down. I never really tried it. Faster than 30. 40, maybe? Oh. I don't know. Speedy. I would say 35. Because I know that if I fall behind, I have a bit of trouble catching up, but I can. Beth, how far is it, do you know, um, transit-wise to the next uh, dive site after we bring everything up? I believe it's about 50 nautical miles. Um, as always, once the ROVs are on deck, we wait about an hour mm -hmm. before we begin transiting and mapping, um, just so that everybody has a chance to safely get everything off of the ROVs. Right. 
and um, get things stowed away before we begin our transit and things get rocking and rolling. Um, and then we always like to arrive on site a little bit early so that we can assess the current and wind mm -hmm. situations and the ability of the ship to hold station. So uh, it won't take us eight hours to map that transit mm -hmm. um, or to make that transit, but when you add in all the additional things we need to do. That's what it comes to. Yeah. Got it. Yes. I might need another. <laughs> I should tighten these bolts. Oh. <laughs> seem to have fixed the problem of the uh, feedback from that controller not being grounded. We put a ground on it. Nice. Yeah. Sorry. The problem was that uh, the first time we grounded it to the rack rails, uh, not rails, the rack vertical, what are the pillars? Inch, inch rack pillars, yeah. In the console here, mm -hmm. those were not grounded. Mm -hmm. So now we have it grounded to the unistrut that's welded to the uh, container. Nice. Yeah, it was weird to see ungrounded rack pillars. So it didn't even cross our minds that they would not be grounded. Anyway. <laughs> it's interesting how the winds seem to always go down in the morning and how they pick up in the evenings mm. even like way out here with no land effect or anything it's just just the sun on the ocean yeah yeah mm. can you speed up a bit please yeah I have Dumbo octopus facts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm back. And I have facts. Back with facts. She's back with facts. I actually have been <laughs> stashing these for like two I'm hours. So I'm so facts. excited to tell everyone. <laughs> okay. So the first fact is that it is the deepest living genus of all known octopuses. Wow. Um, which is cool. Wow. Then um, it Let's also doesn't. 22. It doesn't have an ink sac because it rarely encounters predators. And the female octopus, uh, like, have eggs in different maturation stages, so they have flexibility in, like, mating. And the male octopus will give, like, sacks of sperm to the female octopus so they can mate whenever because they don't encounter each other very often. Wow. Because they're not, yeah, super interesting. And then they eat their prey whole, and they eat copepods, isopods, brittle worm, bristle worms, and amphipods. Um, I think that's what I have, <laughs> my list of facts. Cool, that was great. Thank you.
And they were named after Disney's Dumbo. Aww. Really? For their ears. Which is so cute. How classic. Man. Now that it's after seven, what is everyone going to have for breakfast? <laughs> I don't know. I have an interaction in like 10 Ooh. minutes. <laughs> so I'm oh, going straight from here to work. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think the back row is going to get de uh, depopulated very quickly. Yes, very quickly. Really <laughs> <to Yeah. laughs> eat before we get all of our samples on deck. I think that there's crepes today. Ooh. Oh. Where are you getting that inside scoop from? Well, it alternates pancakes and crepes. Oh. And I had pancakes yesterday, so. That would make sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, someone agreed with me that there were peanut pancakes. Weird. Someone on the oh. ship? Yeah. Okay. Maybe I just got the non-peanut ones, or maybe I don't know what peanuts peanut taste like. Peanut pancakes, interesting. I or like putting peanut, peanut butter on waffles. It sure. kind of is a thing. Peanut I've waffles? I've yeah. seen people put peanut butter, yeah. Yeah, peanut waffles. butter and honey on waffles. Have you ever had a savory waffle? I don't want it. Yeah, I've had <laughs> fried chicken, chicken, chicken waffles. waffles. <laughs> yeah, chicken, oh, chicken's yeah. good. Bacon sometimes too. Yeah. Bacon yeah. does sound nice. Yeah. I've had like bacon pancakes. Ooh, is that bacon in the pancakes? The yeah. bacon, basically, like you, I think you cook the bacon first, and then you just kind of like pour the batter over oh interesting and then it bake like yeah Whoa. it's really good yeah. so like <laughs> one side has exposed bacon yeah and then the mm. i've had yeah bacon pancakes with like eggs on top and salsa oh, oh wow. Cool. wow there was a in the place i used to live there was a waffle shop that was open until 4 a.m so you can guess their target clientele <laughs> and they were incredible waffles oh all sorts of different you know sweet or savory flavors stuff you wouldn't even think would be a normal thing to do but it was really tasty do you go to the Waffle House on the ski mountain? <laughs> no. No? Oh, those are big on the East Coast. Like, all the mountains have like a Waffle Shack. Really? Yeah. Huh. Really? Yep. Waffle That's Shack? Crazy. Yeah. A Waffle House. Yeah. The yellow one? No. 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 <laughs> Not the chain. Oh, because I was like, I've never heard <laughs> of that anywhere. But <laughs> no, they don't have a Waffle House. I was house. like, I feel like yeah. that wouldn't really be... <laughs> A little bit too uh, waffle shack. Like, humble just, for just them. Like a, yeah. yeah, I got you. <laughs> what mountains are those at? <laughs> like most. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. I was like, mm, I don't think I've <laughs> ever seen them. Most of that. Maybe it's a Vermont thing. I don't know. But <laughs> I don't. Oh, fun fact. Someone said in Norwegian we call cephalopods blexprut, which translated to ink squirt and specified as eight armed or ten armed for octopus and squid. Cool. Oh. B L E K K S P R U T. Blexprut? Blexprut. 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 So have you studied them? Are you a Blexprut expert? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great name. I like that. Blexprut. You can slow down on the winch. Slowing down. 22? 21? Just keep an eye on the delta and you can adjust to match. Keep Great it between plus minus 8. Sounds good.
Yep, another octopus translation in Finland. We call octopus mustelkala, M-U-S-T-E-L-K-A-L-A, -E and that translates to ink fish. A lot of the names are like ink yeah. related. That's cool. M-U-S-T-E-L-K-A-L-A. Mustelkala? Mm. I don't know where the stresses are. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's me reading off some of these scientific names. <laughs> Thanks, Shelby. Bye, Shelby. Thank you. Enjoy the interaction. friends. Hi, Megan. Hello. I'm so excited. <laughs> Welcome. We are team hard no, <laughs> alter ego slash soft yes. <laughs> Solid. Yep. That's how, what you missed. How was the dive? <laughs> it was great. Yeah. It's great. The previous watch saw an octopus. Saw a Dumbo octopus. That's really exciting. Yeah. yeah. And we came on watch and immediately rapid fire sampled a bunch of things <laughs> yeah. like okay <laughs> like really woke us up yeah excellent I'm sampling what kind of stuff do we have in the boxes well let me tell you about that um we've got several different geological samples uh we have a few of our rock samples for microbes the microbial world uh we've got a couple different bio samples we've got a crinoid a sponge a sea star, uh, a chrysogorgid, a stolonifera, wow. and then we have a variety of water samples, which we will uh, process for eDNA. So yeah, we got a lot of fun. A lot of fun on board. That's fantastic. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. There's been a lot happening on the ship this morning as well. We're five live ship to shore interactions into the day here at barely wow. past 7 a.m. So, wow. yeah, it's awesome. Talking to busy East Coast, West Coast. Just talked to some kids in California. Christopher signing with some kids right now. Wow. <laughs> An ASL interaction. It's awesome. The ship that never sleeps. <laughs> exactly. All right, rapid fire around the room, everybody. All the, right. the question coming in is, uh, what is your favorite discovery made on one of these expeditions? You can pick this one if, if this one is your first. Can it just be like our favorite thing seen? Yeah, Not I think that's fine. Okay. Yeah. He, he yep, he's up. He's okay. in the lounge. Yep. Or he's in the mess. Yeah. I saw him putting the recovery poles and lines all there, so. My favorite thing that we've seen, I think, was the sea dandelion that we saw. So I think that was, a, that was what it was called. We like just saw it today, yesterday. Um, but it was a little floaty thing that was like shedding something as it went. Um, the dandelion? Yes. Dandelions. Right, a sea dandelion? Four. Yeah, okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, it was beautiful. So that's a little Siri at the top, swimming? Yeah, a little mm -hmm. bit. But it was it had like stuff coming down from the bottom. It was it was tiny. 
very solid one. I liked that um, pulsing heart brain cephalopod mm. thing, the like translucent mm. red one that looks like a heart with an eyeball. That was really cool. It was cuter than I just described it. <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Tell me more. Yeah, that was two dives ago. Is that right? Not it this one, the been, last one. Yeah. Yeah. I think the last dive, but like two, sh two watches ago. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yep, I'm and, with you. And what kind of a thing was it? A pulsing eyeball thing? <laughs> we think it was some kind of cephalopod, right? Is that yeah. what we heard? That was, that was what, we, what we were told, yeah. Was it in the midwater or on the seafloor? No, it was sea on the seafloor. Sea floor. It was floating, but it's on the seafloor, yeah. Okay. And it was red, but you could kind of see into it, and it kind of had like a little pink heart in there or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it looked like the shape of a heart, like a anatomical heart, human heart. Yep. Did it have tentacles? No. no, but I think that red part was sort of the base or the lobes at the bottom. Well, it's kind of like a deep brown red kind of red. Also cuter than that sounded. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cutest looking internal organ ever. <laughs> wow. Fascinating. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I'm not convinced. Well, I'm going to have to go to the footage. <laughs> I'm confused. Yeah. yeah. Check the tapes. All right. Let's project cool. the tapes. Yeah. <laughs> Trevor, favorite discovery? Discovery? Or, oh. or sighting? Uh, or the, th the three vegetable? meter long bamboo coral, single mm. branch. Ooh. Oh. Just yeah, that strange. was just good. That was today. Oh, can I change my answer? Yep. Purple crinoids. <laughs> oh, oh, can I change my answer? <laughs> Red crinoids. Red one. <laughs> uh, What's it like flying around a three meter bamboo coral? Slow. <laughs> I don't know. It's fun. What's better, flying around that bamboo coral or one of the spirally crazy gorges? Uh, I'd say I prefer the bamboo coral. Mm. In the crazy gorge, just everything works, then it's great, but it's not often it gets everything lines up. Those are my favorite, the Iridogorgia, like big, big mm -hmm. corkscrew ones. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to fly around them, so <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, we saw some of those yeah, on, on today's dive. Awesome. It's great. Lynette, I'm like peeking over the monitors at you. Do you have a favorite? Oh my gosh. Favorite creature. <laughs> <laughs> um, the sea dandelion was super cool. Mm -hmm. I agree with that one. Um, I also like the, like, really dark colored things, like the, the Ursula, the, mm -hmm. Ursula. the tube an anemone, anemone. Yeah. Mm. it was mm -hmm. like super black or like dark purple, that was cool, um, and the dark purple crinoids too. Oh, yeah. those are cool. Yeah, dive, dive 1990. Team, which was the Soliday Cliffs. Like, I was editing those photos last night, and they're so colorful. Like, mm -hmm. every time you see things that are just, like, unbelievably colorful, it kind of blows my mind down here. Uh, so, you're like, you spend a lot of energy on those colors. You know, they got to be doing something for you. Yeah. <laughs> Even just that very first dive with those bright yellow sponges and, like, mm -hmm. just all the different, or bright yellow corals. It was just Ooh. a really colorful dive. I forgot about that bright cor uh, that bright sponge, the yellow one. Yeah, it was oh, like the Bolasoma. There's yeah, some that good was so pictures pretty. of them too. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. I'm gonna go. I want to go with like bubble gum coral mm -hmm. basket star bonanza. Oh yeah, like yeah, 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 Probably yeah. one of my favorites, and that's that's actually little little plug for the gallery page. The video highlights are rolling out for this expedition. You can find that by clicking on Nautilus Live, the gallery, and the top, all the top results there will be things from this expedition. Um, you can, can replay that one, but that was kind of like a nightmare if you're <laughs> a plankton, you know, yeah. to like be coming yeah. along a coral covered with other animals that want to eat you, yeah. you yeah. know. Yeah, agreed. That was a, a general highlight of this so far. I have to go with sea pig. 
the sea cucumber. Mm. I was so surprised to see, like we usually we see sea pigs in all these like heavily sedimented areas of the right. sea floor, and to find it, I was like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> what are you, here? Yeah, You're yeah. On the it just it felt out of place, and mm -hmm. also I heart sea pigs. <laughs> And also, I want sea pigs everywhere. So I that's know. Fine. I know. What about that? Oh, what was it called? The like floating tube? Oh, the tunicate. Pyrozone. Uh, Pyrozone. 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 That was really cool. Mm -hmm. Sea pickle. Sea oh. pickle. Mm -hmm. I, I know. I haven't. I haven't seen those pictures yet of that one, but I heard it was a really cool, exciting. It was super cool. It was astounding. I love all those super, I don't know, just odd, gelatinous creatures. They, yeah. mm -hmm. they don't seem animal-like, and yet, and yet there they are. And they don't, like, there's no obvious mode of movement in <laughs> them, which right. makes it so cool. Yeah, you're just like, you have just dialed this neutral buoyancy, near yeah. neutral buoyancy thing and are going for a ride Yeah, in the currents. All right, if you're following along and you have any questions for the team, this is a good chance to get them in. We're at about 300 meters, so we'll be getting close to the recovery uh, and we'll kind of pause the questions as we get the vehicles back on board so you can listen to that operations evolution. So get your questions in now. Oh, good question. Uh, is there medical personnel uh, on the ship? There is. Our first officer, Martina Graben, is our medical officer. Um, and several other crews and several other people in the science party are have advanced medical training. Um, there's a hospital room on board. and uh, But the primary way we keep each other safe is by looking out for each other, um, practicing things we need to do in emergencies, but also, you know, being there for one another, making sure nobody's carrying heavy things on stairways, and you know, keep a hand for yourself, hand for the ship. Uh, take care, because we're a long ways out in the world. Yeah, wait for that roll to make any dramatic moves, right? <laughs> yes. Megan, what's your favorite discovery? Oh, uh. I have such a hard time with the superlative <laughs> questions. Um, I just, I just in talking to, you know, shout out to the fourth graders um, in Los Angeles that we just talked with. We, uh, they want to talk about the sperm whale, and mm. um, like every time I rewatch that clip, I remember how like unbelievably exciting it was to have the sperm whale come and cruise around. If you haven't seen it, check it out on our YouTube and on the gallery page. If you write in sperm whale, it will pop right up. Um, but that, that encounter was over 20 minutes long, mm -hmm. like of Whoa. that whale just like hanging out right around the vehicles and, you know, staring at us from every angle, like checking out the whole vehicle. So it, it's not necessarily like a discovery. We knew, you know, we know <laughs> sperm whales dive that deep. We know there's a really active population in the Gulf of Mexico. Like that was a teenage boy sperm whale. So like kind of funny to have it, you know, just like kind of be curious and do something unexpected. Um, but that's that will always be always be a fave um huh. but like the next discovery is the f most favorite one you know i i like seeing things that we don't know and then it sometimes is like a year or a few years later by the time you find mm -hmm. out it was actually a new species or something you know um an expedition in the galapagos like a 10-day expedition discovered 30 new species so you're just like the wow. rate that we can like that we can help make discoveries in the world or we can help describe things i guess you know reveal reveal knowledge not make knowledge maybe but reveal it um it's just rad <laughs> that's so cool 30 yeah. in 10 30 days in that's 10 days. amazing on the galapagos platform yeah wow. in ecuador and yeah wow yeah <laughs>
Trevor, do we have time to sneak in another question, or are you in recovery mode? In about uh, three minutes, I'll have more time. Sounds good. All right. Uh, the two scientists on shift here need to go get our breakfast, so we are ready to deal with our samples as soon as the RV is on deck. So thanks yes, for joining us. And we'll see you again uh, in about 12 hours for the next watch. Thanks. Bye, Beth. Bye, Sounds Diane. Awesome. Thank you. Bye. See you in the lab. Yeah, so the game plan here, we are going to get these vehicles um, back on deck, uh, then have some pause of time on station while we uh, process samples and also rinse down the ROVs as part of our permit pro um, conditions that we make sure that any chance of any um, specific biological contamination or just conditions from the local area are kept here at the local area. Then we'll leave station and map our way to our next seamount and plan to be back in the water at 4 p.m. our local time, um, which of course we'll update on our website and on social media everywhere. But uh, more diving soon. All right, how's this gonna go? Uh, slowly. Yep. It looks very similar every time though, which is nice. Yeah. So if you're watching on channel three, you now have a view of the traction winch, um, which is below the main deck, um, one deck below, and is the cable management for the uh, tether, <laughs> or for the, for the umbilical, that connects from the ship, sending high voltage down to Atalanta, as it passed through on its way to Hercules and bringing back uh, the data and all of the video feeds, all the information feeds, um, all the piloting controls that we have for the vehicles back up to us here in the control van. There's the crossover and it looks good. Do another wrap or two and then we are good to go full speed again. All right, Roger. So this traction winch is a new addition to the ship about three years ago, two years ago. Um, moving from the direct drive winch, which maybe you'd seen if you're a long time Nautilus viewer watching on the deck that it's out, out exposed on the back deck. And this one is now um, really enclosed within the ship. The question, Trevor, if you, you have a second, was why are there why are there two drums? And you know, could you explain a little more about it, maybe advantages of a traction winch like this? Yeah, sure. Just a sec. Yeah, take your time. I think that looks good. I think so. Okay, I'm Back going full speed again. Sounds great. Uh, Megan, the question was what? Why are there two drums on the winch? Can you talk a little bit about the, how the traction winch works? Yeah, the two spinning things on the left side mm -hmm. are the traction shivs, and the big gray looking thing on the right is the main storage drum. So the storage drum just holds the wire keeping a constant 2,000 pounds tension. And the two turning, or the two traction shivs on the left side, the cable goes around there five, six times. What is it? One, two, three, four, five times. And that takes all of the tension using friction around the drum, or around the turning, uh, around the traction shiv. Mm -hmm. So all of the tension from the ROV is removed before being put onto the storage drum and it's just held with a small amount of 2,000 pound tension. I was trying to think of like what an analogy would be like I'm like 
dental floss? Like if you like wrap it around your finger and then kind of like squeeze and the inner loops get way too tight around your fingers, we are avoiding doing that by holding the tension. Also, dental floss is a good example. If you wrap it around your finger, you know, I don't know, 10 times, mm -hmm. and then try to pull the loose end, it's going to slide a lot less well than if you just wrapped it around one time. So that's what the traction ships do, because the cable goes around them so many times, it increases that friction. Thank you. Uh, for the question coming in about recommended books about the ocean, we actually do have a recommended reading list that's been compiled over the years of the Corps of Exploration of like favorite books of different, there's kids books on the list, there's history books if you're into archaeology, if you're into biology. So you can find that um, on the Nautilus Live website if you go up to the search bar um, and just write in reading, you'll pull up um, that resource from our education uh, resources on the website. So. Fantastic. You mean I didn't have to be writing all of those down this whole time? I mean, always do, because it's a <laughs> constantly evolving <laughs> list, and we can't capture them all. But uh, there's, it's a good place to start, maybe. Fantastic. <laughs> start your journey reading there. It also is probably a little biased to some of the like writers that we've had on board. You know, Dr. Ballard's books are there, and uh, yeah. some other folks who've come out with us before. Yeah, I'm always curious about what people are reading and what they're mm. what they're fascinated about, what yeah. books yeah. have grabbed them and why. Mm -hmm. It was like n not a sponsor, but I'm reading um, I'm reading The Brilliant Abyss by Dr. Helen Scales right now, and it's a book. It's a nonfiction book about the deep sea, about deep sea science, and like a really great introduction to to like the fascinating parts of the deep sea. So. Maybe that one is a good place to start for our viewers if they want to nice. dig in a little deeper. So coming up on 160 meters, just for orientation, if you're watching on YouTube, you can come on over to nautiluslive.org and see the different camera feeds there. We have three feeds going out. Channel one is the Hercules view. Channel 2 is the Atalanta view. Um, so you'll have different, uh, they're coming up kind of back to back, facing away from one another. Um, and during the recovery, you'll see different views. Uh, and channel 3 is the back deck view. So you'll see the team come out um, to manage the recovery of the vehicles there. Keep those views going for you. Thanks, Steve. Great view on Channel 3 now. You are looking um, through the Atalanta butt cam or the tether cam. Um, so what you're seeing there is the um, bending strain relief, which is a large rubber um, piece on the Housing? back of the vehicle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Casing maybe is a good way to say it. Yeah, it kind of goes around um, like around the tether itself to prevent it from taking like really sharp turns where which could damage the glass fiber optic strands inside the tether um, so that keeps it keeps it safe there and you can see the daisy chain which is the lift line holding the lift line to the tether there and then in the distance you can see rov hercules um, facing the opposite direction so on recovery we keep the tether kind of held out between them so that there's not a chance you you know, corkscrew it up, turn left, turn left, turn left, to put a bend in it. And it lets the pilots kind of keep an eye on each other and be sure they're ascending at the same rate since Atalanta is being lifted by the, the 
uh, winch here on board and Hercules is driving up with the thrusters. Try not to drag anybody around anywhere. <laughs> Match that pace. That would be a nice drag. What a drag. <laughs> yeah. Cue the soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> Getting That's close to 100, 100 meters. meters. <laughs> close. Woo. Which means our back deck is very actively prepping and getting the back deck ready for recovery of the vehicles. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful morning. I'm sure the Moli are around the Laysan Albatross. They've been with us for a few days, which is fascinating and just wonderful to uh, have them join us on this They're expedition. Such beautiful birds. Mm -hmm. such okay, beautiful we can birds. go a little slower Enormous. now. Enormous. And then with that down. dark line, you know, almost eyebrow. Yeah. Over. I think it looks like the best eyeliner. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Stunning birds. And it, as much as, you know, like we're explorers like and observers, okay. like it feels like they're watching us, you know, in like a very oh, cool yeah. way as they oh, like yeah. mm -hmm. fly by right at the social deck height and uh -huh. kind of like peek in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They do little flybys, check us out, mm -hmm. sometimes land on the water, paddle around a little bit, yeah. see what we're up to. Mm hmm. So the Laysan albatross will spend most of its life at sea, and then it does return to um, a very specific island here, um, Laysan, to lay their one egg. Mm -hmm. So that's why we see them around this area. Can you give me bubble they don't on res, nest please? in any yeah. other area, is that correct, Megan? Mm -hmm. The Laysan albatross. Are they also they also live on well, they live all throughout the island. Midway is one of the really big okay. breeding colonies, but a lot you know originally named for Laysan. Well, mm -hmm. originally named in English <laughs> for for Laysan. Um, yeah, there's 14 million nesting albatross in Papahanaumokuakea, which is wow, incredible. So many birds. I just learned that one from Justin. I was like, I like that. Mind blown. I, I'm now like scrambling to check my fact sheet, but I'm like 14 million seabird pairs, or I think that may have been Molly. I don't remember. We'll get back to you on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, slow down. Gotcha. We'll slow it down. Super slow. Yeah. This one's 61. Yeah. Ah. All right, I'm at 59. We'll let you listen in to our pilots and navigator here as we got set for this recovery evolution. Thanks for checking it out. Someone on deck. 
Lonely Dan. <laughs> Happy normal day, Dan. <laughs> yeah. Bir birthday plus one. Fifty-six. Some interesting uh, luminescence in the Atalanta cam. Yeah. A little bit of glitters, yeah. Blinking. Yeah, kind of shining like with the light. Little right. fireflies. That's pretty. There you go, you can start to see some moly in the background. I am at 53. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're almost stopped. Just creeping and crawling in. Crawling in, 52 meters. You could, yeah, whenever you get there, that's fine. Control via main deck, ready to check. Yeah, you can just get it to 50 now. All right. Loud and clear, main deck. Uh, we all stop five zero meters. We okay to come up? Sure, yeah. Yes, all stop five zero meters. Are we good to continue up? Yes. Bridge, main deck, ready to check. Uh, loud and clear. Okay to come up. Uh, stand by, Captain is on their way to the bridge. Just so it calls back when you're ready. Roger. Okay, so the bridge needs just a minute to settle out in position. So if you're watching on channel one, you're seeing the Hercules feed facing backwards. It looks like maybe some pyrosomes or jellies going by the screen. Channel two is the Atalanta camera, which is facing towards the ship's stern. You'll see that um, come into view. And then if you're watching on channel three, or if you have a couple tabs open, uh, you can watch all these at once. And uh, that is the back deck, or you can see some of the team getting prepared first to bring Atalanta back onto deck, right, and then recover. to use the white crane to pick up RV Hercules um, out of the seabed, or out of the water column. Cool. Okay, sonars are stopped. Atalanta sonar is stopped as well. Roger. All lights are off except for butt light. Thank you. And thrusters are on but disabled. Roger. All stations, this is the bridge. Uh, bridges go for uh, uh, recovery. Bridge is good to go. All right, coming up. Copy that. Let's keep with our current plan, but I expect that we might have to uh, track a line. Let's let's try to hold position first, and if it doesn't work, we'll change it up. But I think we will have to change it up.
is always exciting because you never know what you might see at the surface. Totally different from what we see. It's funny, Atalanta's heading. Down below. It's getting, picking up the ship. Oh. Magnets. That's cool. Actually, maybe we'll leave that one on. And they're at 38 meters. Raj. Current's pushing me south. We'll see how that plays. Setting my intention for mono, like oceanic white tip. I'm like, come on, ah. <laughs> <laughs> come here, friends, come here, friends. <laughs> I want to see you. <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. Twenty four meters. You know, I think one of the really amazing things on Nautilus is seeing these animals twenty five hundred meters down mm -hmm. live in situ doing what they do. Mm -hmm. It's incredible when you think about it. So cool. Gliding around the seafloor, spying on animals in there. <laughs> so if we do have habitat. to move on the surface, let's move 090. Yeah. Track, track line 090. Keep the same heading. It's um, such a privilege to just get to like again, we'll witness. Try holding position, minute, but you know. that'll be the change. It really is, you know, and then we get the samples aboard, but, it, you know, and they are beautiful and stunning, but to see them thriving where they are first, you know, is incredible. And I'm bridge control small, van. Such a small glimpse of the total seafloor that we I get to know. see. I Control <laughs> van, bridge. Just imagine everything that's out Please there. Please reduce thrust to 25%. 25% yeah. on the jet pump, okay. That's 10 meters. So we should uh, change that to B when Argus's depth is that instead of the payout. So we will, we're committed now, but let's just keep that in mind for next time. Because right now, Atalanta's spinning. So can you turn oh. it on thrusters? Kirk, you're going to have to start driving out to the Indian tether. You're pretty close. Yeah, thrusters on. Um, you want me to make a turn? Heading change to starboard. Starboard. Yes. Heading change to Copy starboard. Copy that. That is real current. Roger. Yeah. Ooh, boy. Hello, fishes. All right. <laughs> We've got our heading. Heading locked in. Okay, heading should be 060. 060. Okay. Yeah, same as the ship. Sorry. All right, get there. There it is. Coming around. About 10 degrees. Zero six zero. Yeah, keep driving, Herc. Copy. Okay, and as soon as you're out of the water, kill the thrusters. Kill thrusters. Right now, you can kill thrusters. Okay, thrusters off. Yeah, we'll track a line when we get to the stir. Put a light on on her, uh, Adelina. Turn your butt light off. Butt light off. Uh, sorry.
If you're watching home, at home, live, uh, we are recovering Atalanta right now. And uh, you can see Herc sort of trailing after the ship there. Be recovered second uh, via the crane on the port side. Uh, maybe we'll hold position. It was just like 10 meters deep that it was bad. Yeah, yeah so there was a current down there. Yeah. Let's see how that goes. So channel uh, two. Yeah, we can, when it's time, hold position. thrust to 90% and hold position. Okay, full power on the jet pump and hold position. All right, so channel two, you see um, the That's wild, so it's, it's deep enough that it affects the ship, but it's not on the surface. It's just really low. Yeah. Huh. Anyway, weird, okay. That's fascinating, a current's trucking like that. 